I can say Stadium in New York, and ultimately we can tell you it's quite comfortable or it's quite chilly. There is a gusting wind here today that we've been discussing, and the temperature since this morning at 9 o'clock when it was 40 has dropped to 37 degrees. And it has been ultimately sunny and cloudy. It will be quite chilly before this afternoon is over. Of course, our ideas are not on the weather today, but rather the American Football League Championship. And down below us now, the co-captains are preparing to walk out to meet the officials for the ceremonial toss of the coin to decide who is going to kick off and who is to receive. And we'll repeat again that this afternoon's officials are headed by referee Walt Fitzgerald. Now we come to the moment, Aldi Regattas, and sometimes they say, this is the time you get down to the nitty-gritty. Here we are. We're moments away from kickoff. And certainly, as a former All-Pro and All-American yourself, you must have some last-moment thoughts about which way this game might go. And I'm not talking about who's going to win, but rather the pattern of the game. Well, it's got to be a football game that will be the pattern that's gotten them both here, Jim. They, they can't change their pattern now. They're going to play, and they're going to go with the things that they do the best. LaMonica likes to go to the air. He likes to go to Bolitnikov. We might see a little bit of a change. He's been throwing the Warren Wells deep in, either to the deep flag or over the middle to the goalpost. He goes to his backs on occasion. He doesn't run as much. He may well run today, however. But I think they're going to go, again, with their strength. Joe Namath, like Maynard, like Sauer, and he's got an awfully good one in Pete Lyman. So we're going to see strength going to strength. There's not going to be any significant change. There may be a couple of formation changes, Jim, but not in basic uh, game strategy. The Oakland Raiders will receive to our right, dressed as they are in their gray pants, black numerals, gray and black helmets, and the New York Jets in their home uniforms of white trousers, white helmets with green markings, and green jerseys with white numerals are to our left. Oakland has the most first downs in regular league play. New York allowed the fewest. Oakland, the best rushing average in American Football League play. The New York defense, the best against the rush. Oakland, the best as far as completing most passes, as well as knocking off the opposition. New York has had its quarterback knocked off the most times. This game is underway. A kickoff is taken in the end zone by Charlie Smith. Make that Atkinson. He's out across the 15 of the 17-yard line, and down he goes there. They turn her down to make the stop. Number 29, George Atkinson, who gained more than 1,200 yards returning punts and kickoffs this year, races the ball not out to the 20, but they marked it at the 18 word first and 10. That'll be Warren Wells and Billy Cannon, the end, LaMonica, Smith, Dixon, and Belitnikoff, the setback. Warren Wells comes to the left side. Belitnikoff is on the right. Billy Cannon, the tight end, also on the left side. LaMonica calling signals for the first down play. Dixon takes a couple steps to the left. The ball is handed and set to Charlie Smith. He's down the line of scrimmage for half and a half a yard long. Charlie Smith on the first play of the day. Knocked down by Jerry Silvin. For the New York Jets defensively, Silvin, Rochester, Elliott, and Ziggs, the front four. Ralph Baker, Al Atkinson, Larry Grantham, the linebackers. Johnny Sample, Jim Hudson, Bill Baird, and Randy Beverly, the deep man. Second down. Wells again left. The Litnikoff right. Second down and about ten and a half. LaMonica back for the first pass of the afternoon. Hit it foul. Steps out of it. Back across the 15 to 16. He's lost two more yards. Paul Rochester making the stop. And it's third down, Aldi Regattas. And we've seen now the Oakland Raiders come strong to the left side one time, back to the right side. Uh, LaMonica had the big rush put on him. He tried running to his strength to the left, and he was going to throw. If he comes back to the left, to Jim, it might be that he may try to isolate man-to-man Bolitnikoff on number 24, John Sample. Bolitnikoff wide right. Johnny Sample is out there with him. Playing about five yards off the line of scrimmage. Bolitnikoff set back as a flanker on third down long yardage. Pass coming out of the backfield and center position overthrown. At the 15-yard line, and the Oakland Raiders will have to kick the ball away to the New York Jets. They are in the first minute and a half of play. There is no score. Jim, just there, we saw Fred Bolitnikoff in a little confrontation with number 24, John Sample. Uh, John is up for this football game. He wants very much to be in that Super Bowl. Mike Eyeside has come in to do the kicking. Eyeside averaging better than 43 yards per punt. And he'll be kicking the ball away to Bill Baird and Earl Christie. High pass from center. 
Gets the kick away, a very short wobbly kick that'll hit down at the 42-yard line of Oakland and drop dead at the 43. And so the Jets right away have excellent field position on the 43-yard line of the Raiders in this shortest ball game for the American Football League Championship. And now, the Jets with Namath, Boozer, Snell, and Maynard in the backfield, Sauer and Lyman the end. Hill and Herman, the tackle. Salamini and Rasmussen, the guards, and Smith, the center, are in the huddle. Lassiter, Birdwell, Oates, and Davidson, the front four for Oakland. Oliver, Connors, and Otto, the linebacker. With Atkinson, Bird, Grayson, and Brown, the deep man. First down. Namath is going to throw on first down. Has it man. Juan Namath down to the 29-yard line. And it's first down, New York Jets. And there, Jim, you saw an interesting alignment because we have Pete Lamman split way wide to the left side with number 13, Don Maynard, in the slot to the left. Number 32, Emerson Boozer, split way wide to the right side with number 83, George Sauer, in the slot. Double wing, first down situation in their throwing. And this crowd of better than 63,000 here are on its feet. Remember, this is a New York crowd, and you'll hear every time the Jets do something a great deal of cheering. This time, the tight end, Pete Lamont, is split about 15 yards to the left. Boozer is to the right. The lone setback is Matt Snell, and Namath is going to pass again on first down. Excellent protection. Across the middle, flag goes down on Jake Turner. And it is pass interference. Down on the 20-yard line. No score. 12 minutes to go. In the first quarter, but the New York Jets taking the punt on the 43 have now moved to the 20. And Jim, it's always interesting watching that remaining back, and that back is Matt Snell. When you see a double wing, oftentimes you're going to see a red dog. They're going to come right at you, figuring that with one back out of that backfield, there's a, there's a defensive advantage. Nose of the ball right on the 20-yard line. And the New York Jets are in business in the first three minutes of the ball game. Lamons again. The same set goes wide left. Boozer comes wide right. Name it this time. Hands off the Snell on the draw. Right up the middle across the 15 down to the 13-yard line. Goes so not Snell, and he's angry that he did not go all the way. But the middle linebacker, Dan Connors, is the man who made the stop after Colin Oates tipped him up on the way through. Second down. And about four. And also, Jim, in the in the right slot to the right side, number 83, George Fowler, is being played very tight. Extremely tight. He could be uh, very interesting. He's covered by Willie Brown. Again, the two slot backs. Again, name it back to throw on second down and four. Looking downfield by himself. It's made a touchdown. I'm sure not only is New York hot with a 14-yard touchdown pass to Maynard, but I'm sure that Oakland was not looking for this offensive alignment and will have to make some adjustments. Jim Turner, who leads the league in points scored, nearly 150, 147. In to have the extra point, Babe Perilli to hold, and the kick is up, but the kick is good. And New York is out in front. Time out on the field with the score now. New York Jets, seven. Oakland Raiders, nothing. Now. Now. That's the name of the show. This is Roscoe. Now is the sound of today and tomorrow. Jimmy Webb, composer of MacArthur Park, by the time I get to Phoenix, and up, up, and away. Jimmy Webb is now. I don't really want to be brilliant as much as I, I want to go on writing good songs. Now is Jimmy Webb, 21-year-old millionaire composer. Inviting you to meet more now people every 
day, Monday through Friday, on this NBC station. Jim Simpson with Aldi Regatta from Shea Stadium, the American Football League Championship. The Jets lead it 7 to nothing. 11 minutes, 21 seconds to go, first quarter, as Curly Johnson gets set to kick off to Oakland, Charlie Smith, and George Atkinson. Oakland failed to pick up a first down. The Jets, first time they had the football, got a touchdown. The ball bounced loose, is picked up by Charlie Smith, who has great speed, and he's out across the 25 and near the 30-yard line. And Oakland's Dale LaMonica will get another chance. The ball with the nose on the 30-yard line. First and 10, and uh, now Oakland will try to move offensively, but once the Jets get the ball again, D-Row, we'd like to a few words on the Oakland adjustments in defense. They bustle out of the huddle with Politikoff going to the right. Juan Wells coming left, set back to Dixon and Charlie Smith. First down from the 30 of Oakland. The Monica dropping straight back to throw, looking for Politikoff and overthrows him at the sideline. Johnny Zappo was giving him a few yards, but Politikoff was overthrown at the 35. Tim, just a comment on the Jet defense. They're in a four. It's an odd four. When we say odd, the, up, the defensive line is shifting to the strength. So you'll see a man head up on the center, a man on the outside shoulder of the guard, another man further wide, one man to the weak side. The linebackers are playing 4-3, and they're coming to the inside. Second down, 10, and for the first time, Warren Wells and Politnikoff go to the same side, to the right. LaMonica back to throw, looking to his right, looking downfield, and it falls in front of a defensive back. Jimmy Hudson, the strong side safety, way short, intended for Warren Wells, and that could be the first problem with the win today. And here is also an awfully big play coming up. He has not been able to move the football. He'll be kicking again. If the field position goes for the Jets, it could be tough. He did have Charlie Smith, however, open. Al Atkinson, number 62, the middle linebacker, was covering the third man out of the backfield. So let's keep our eye on 23, Charlie Smith. Third down, 10 again, Wells and Bolitnikoff to the right. Hudson and Sample over there in the matchup defensively for them. LaMonica dropping back on third down, 10. 7-0 Jets, fires down the middle, set it for Billy Cannon. He's got it right down at the 34-yard line of the New York Jets. First down for the Oakland Raiders. Randy Beverly made the tackle, and the tight end coming out, Billy Cannon, at a step or two on Beverly, carries the ball to the 34 of New York at first and 10 for the Raiders. Tim, when you go to that side, you're, he's going to the weak side. He had number 33, Billy Cannon, on his weak side. He was strong, as you described it, to the right side. Beverly had a covered cannon, man-to-man. And again, Bolitnikoff and Wells now. This is the fourth consecutive play. They've both been strong side right. Sample is laying off Bolitnikoff a great deal. Ball is handed to Dixon, and he is thrown in the backfield by number 81, Jerry Philbin, one of the premier defensive linemen in the American Football League. A loss back to the 38-yard line, where it is second down and about 13. Now you've got a situation where a quarterback like Darrell LaMonica likes to come with a draw or likes to come with a screen, but when you have a defense as sophisticated as the Jets defense, they're going to be looking for something of this nature. Now Wells comes wide to the left as a flanker. Boletnikov is split to the right. Second down, 13 from the 38. LaMonica dropping straight back. Firing to the sidelines, and Charlie Smith drops the ball at the 32-yard line with no one near him. A linebacker, Ralph Baker, was over there, but Baker was about 10 yards away from it. Nine minutes, 29 seconds to go. First quarter, the Jets out in front 7 to nothing on a 14-yard touchdown pass to Don Maynard in the first series of plays in which the Jets had the football. Oakland in its first series failed to move. Then they got a first down at the 34 and a pass to Billy Cannon on third down and 10. And now they find themselves third down and 13 with the ball on the 37. Wells and Politnikoff, strong side right. Wells is the flanker. Cannon is on the left. Dixon and Smith the setback. And now LaMonica is going to call for timeout on a big play, third down and 13. And Darrell is simply trotting over to the bench, Aldi Regattas, to see what it is that John Rouch, his head coach, wants him to do. Tim, an awfully good time to call timeout also. He saw the defensive unit of the New York Jets rolling to the side that you've been describing, the wide side of the field, where Bolitnikoff and Warren Wells are. That left to the left side, Billy Cannon. You'll recall the big play they threw. Randy Beverly would have had to cover him man-to-man, but I'm sure Darrell also saw number 60, Larry Grantham, dropping off. Well, there's timeout on the field with the score of the New York Jets 7, the Oakland Raiders nothing. This is Joe Garagiola. 
When the Dodge Boys make a New Year's resolution, it's a dandy. This year, they've resolved to give you another crack at their Dodge White Hat Special Sale. And they're going to use their famous winning formula. Take a popular car, like a two-door Dodge Dart Compact, add on the features people want most, subtract some dollars from the price, and watch the sales multiply. This means you can have a specially equipped Dodge Dart complete with special features at White Hat Special Low Package Price. Features like a vinyl roof in black, white, tan, or green, a simulated wood grain steering wheel, fender mounted turn signals, white wall tires, deluxe wheel covers, and much more. So why don't you make a resolution of your own to see your Dodge dealer today and take advantage of his white hat special low package price on a new Dodge Dart. Look for the white hat sticker. It's your ticket to a money saving deal. Third down, 13. The Raiders at the line of scrimmage. Jim Simpson with Aldi Regatta. New York leading 7-0. LaMonica back to pass. Downfield intended for Bartlett. One-handed. Almost caught it at the four. Juggled it with one hand with Johnny Sample all over top of him. Sample pats him on the shoulder because it was almost a magnificent catch with a fine defensive play by Sample. It sure was. And it's the kind of play, Jim, that John Sample has got to be making, although you'll notice that he was covered and helped a little bit to that inside. What they're trying to do is to take Jim Hudson out of there and to isolate Bolitnikoff on Sample. We're going to see a lot more of this. Here's George Flanders, 117 points, trying a field goal now from the 45. A monica to hold, and the kick is up, and dying hits the crossbar. That win, as we described before, is quite a factor here today in the passing of Lamonica thus far, and in that particular field goal attempt of 45 yards by George Flanders. George usually has enough foot to convert, and so the Jets stay out in front by the score of 7 to nothing. Nine minutes, 17 seconds left to go. First carry, the Jets now, with that 7 nothing lead, get the ball on their own 20. This is the first time they've been this far in their own territory, because they took over after a punt on the Oakland 43 and took it in from there. Joe Namath, Emerson Boozer, Matt Snell, the setbacks, and again they're in this double slot formation, which thoroughly confused the Oakland defense earlier. The name, name it back to pass on first down with the win. Down the sidelines, intended for Pete Lamont. The tight end broken up by Roger Bird, number 21, the All-American from Kentucky, and a safety man. And now let us, while they come back downfield, Aldi, we're going to talk about the defensive adjustments Oakland must make. Well, what the Raiders are, uh, the Oakland Raiders are doing, and they're fortunate in, in having such outstanding personnel. When they have Lamons 87 to the left, that's the Jets. 13 Don Maynard in the slot to the left. 83 Sauer slotted right, and 32 a Boozer. Although Big Turner's in there now for him, they are trying to put man to man. And we'll get back to what they're doing in just a moment. All right, it is second down, 10 from the 20. Amos back to throw again from a crowd. Downfield, over the head of George Starr, and he was being guarded back there by Willie Brown, one of the fine cornerbacks in the American Football League. Now a little bit more than nine minutes to go in this first quarter. Seven-nothing New York Jets. At a third down ten. And Jim, what they're doing, they'll put Roger Bird, number 21, to play head up on number 87, Lamont. That's the man he would cover if he were in his traditional position. They then take Atkinson, 43, and he, they have him on number 13, at Don Mayer, the man he would ordinarily cover. Then they bring the right cornerback, Willie Brown, over to the opposite side, although now I notice they're switching that again. Now they've got Atkinson playing to the left side. Third down, 10, same formation. Rushes on Namath, passes across the field. Four takes Turner, has him at the 43-yard line. And now they say it is incomplete. The ball was juggled all the way down with Dave Grayson, who leads the American Football League with 10 interceptions on top of him. And they said he did not control the football as he hit the ground. Grayson tried to take it away from him. And it is fourth down, and this time the Jets have held, or rather been held, by the Oakland Raiders. Seven to nothing to score, eight minutes, 59 seconds to go. First quarter. Roger Bird goes back as the up safety man. And George Atkinson is standing inside his own 40. Bird is up near midfield. Curly Johnson is in to do the kicking. Johnson with a 43.8 yard putting average on the year. And he's got the win with him, but he's got a low pass from center, gets the ball away. Bird, the up man, takes it without a fair catch at the 47 and knocked down as he crosses to the 48 yard line of the Oakland Raiders. And now the Raiders have good field position. 
as the time out on the field with the score, New York 7 and Oakland nothing. Hi, this is Bill Cullen, and I have a question. What's your favorite topic? Are you the sober-minded citizen type who makes it a point to keep up with current events? Then you probably put your emphasis on plain talk, newsbeat, or point of view. If your interest lies in the arts, you'll enjoy Critic at Large. Or do you keep up with the latest fads, fashions, and doings of the in-crowd? Then you'll pick what's new. If you're a sportsman or a hobbyist, we'll help you find new ways to spend your time off. And of course, if you've got problems, and who hasn't, just remember, it's mind over matter. If you're a budding scientist or lawyer, you'll find the latest discoveries and the newest legal questions discussed and analyzed on what's new in science and point of view law piece. Who says you can't please all the people all the time? We've got experts who do it every weekday. That's why we suggest you put your emphasis on NBC Radio. Jim Simpson, Aldi Regattas, first quarter, 7-0 New York. The Raiders have the ball just over the 49 of the New York Jets. Handoff from LaMonica to Hewitt Dixon, who picks up about four yards to get just inside the 45-yard line. And it'll be second down and six from there. The only score of this ball game, the first series of plays, capped by a 14-yard touchdown pass to Don Maynard. Maynard, the last time these two teams met, matter of fact, the only time this year, Cup passes, 10 of them, for more than 200 yards. Let the cough to the right, Warren Wells is split left. Smith and Dixon, the setbacks on second down six. From the 44, LaMonica dropping straight back, firing, intended for number 81, Warren Wells, but a fine play by Larry Grantham, tipped the ball up and out of bounds. And the pass fell incomplete. It'll be third down and six for Darrell LaMonica. Both teams are going with passes that are taking men out of the backfield. We've been describing the double wing of the New York Jets. Uh, LaMonica has been coming with more of a traditional approach. That time he had to his right side uh, 25, Bolitnikoff, with uh, Billy Cannon. Then he had 81 over here to the left side. They just reversed it. Bolitnikoff to the right and Wells to the left. Third down play for the Oakland Raiders. And LaMonica is going to throw. Dropping straight back. Firing the ball over the head of Bolitnikoff, the intended receiver, with Johnny Sample making a dive for the football. And again, it is fourth down. Monica came into this game with 25 touchdown passes, five of them last Sunday. Maynard came in with 15 touchdown passes, but one of them today to make it 16. And that's the difference in the ball game. Mike Eyeshot comes in to do the punting, stepping back inside his own 40-yard line. And Earl Christie and Bill Bears again go deep. On fourth down, and the sun has come out of Jay Stadium with 63,000 looking on. A low driving kick. Christie watches it hit inside the 20. It's down to the 15 and pops out of bounds right at the 15-yard line. That'll be first and 10 for the New York Jets. Jim, another significant thing in this football game is the fact that the linebackers of the Jets are making some severe drops, figuring that LaMonica is going to come with a short passing game, putting a great deal of pressure on the front four, and it looks like they're trying to give LaMonica the opportunity to run the football, figuring that if Oakland runs and they can stop them, that's more times that name the pass to throw the ball. Exactly eight minutes left to go in the quarter. 7 0 New York as George Sauer and Bake Turner again come to the right. Pete Lamons is split wide left, along with Don Maynard. And then uh, Snell is the only setback. The double slot, name it a lot of time passing. But Bake Turner cutting down from the 30 toward midfield it looked as though he stumbled in his turn. Could not get to the football that falls incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. In that defense that we've been describing and going against that double wing, there have been, it's a man to man situation. The uh, New York Jets are coming mostly with crossing patterns. The inside man going to the sideline, the outside man going to the inside. Again, Jim. There are several things that Namath can do. They've been stopping that double wing briefly. He could try a draw. He could try a screen for the wide side of the field. Double wing. Slot backs again. Namath back again to throw on second down 10. Lots of time. Now running out of time. Now fires the ball for Don Maynard. Out of bounds. No good. Inside the 50-yard line of Oakland. Over there to cover was Woody Brown. It has lost it at Birdwell, Oates, and Davidson, the front four, remember. Oliver, Connors, and Otto, the linebackers. With Atkinson, Bird, Grayson, and Brown, the deep men. Alamini and Hill, the left side of the line. For the New 
York Jets with Herman out of tackle today because Sam Walton, a fine rookie from East Texas State, is out. And Ross Musson has moved up to play his guard spot. Smith the center. Starr and Lamons the end. Namath, Boozer, Schnell, Maynard. When they are in a setback position, in other words, not in that double wing back. Boozer has been out and Dick Turner has come in. In other words, two men listed as flanker backs, both in the ball game, in this double wing setup. And now they come to third down 10, Namath dropping back once more. Down and out, but he has overthrown Bake Turner at the 30-yard line. Namath jumps up and down. The man who was pressuring him was Dan Birdwell. A fine defensive tackle, and it is fourth down again. You know? And it looks like the Oakland Raiders have figured it out. They've uh, been dropping deep, figuring they're going for the short pass. And the Oakland Raiders, in that play, they had Ralph Oliver dropping way back, taking the short move away. So it looks like they have figured it out. This is uh, it's going to be a, I think they're going to force the Jets out of this and more into the conventional type offense. Jets lead 7-0. Charlie Johnson standing on his one-yard line to kick the ball away to George Atkinson or Roger Bird. Again, almost a low pass from center, but this time a fine kick. Driving Atkinson back inside the 35, over his head, picks it up on the 25. Took it back to the 20, gets back up to the 25, and runs through the two tackles and has thrown off his feet. Rodemaker and Berlin Big made the stop. Rodemaker doesn't weigh that much, but when a 268-pound Berlin Big hits him, along with John Needham, that is something. There's a flag down on the play, and now they're walking back toward Aitman. Inside the 15, down to the 13-yard line, as Walt Fitzgerald, the official tells us, that's who was clipping on the play. We described to you that Atkinson was dashing around with the football, reversing field, back inside the 20 and then back out to the 25. And when he reversed, a New York jet turned his back and was clipped from behind. So, deep in their own territory, LaMonica brings them out. Well to left, Blitnikoff to the right. LaMonica back to throw on first down. Going far downfield, and Jennifer Blitnikoff back there, and Blitnikoff was out of bounds, but he got one hand on the ball at the 45, with Johnny Sample to defend on him. And the story is, L.D. Regardless, around the league, that Sample can defend very well against that sideline pass. It is when they go down and come in that John has trouble. Yeah, and I think what LaMonica is seeing, however, is number 22, Hudson, rolling to that side. So we'll probably see a lot more action than number 81, Warren Wells, against number 42, Randy Beverly. Let the top right, Warren Wells left, Johnny Smith, you're addicted to the setback. Seven minutes, 22 seconds to go, first quarter, 7 nothing, New York. And this is second down 10 for LaMonica from his own 13. And off to Dixon, and Dixon gets out of the arms of Grantham and across the 20-yard line and out near a first down. Ralph Baker, the left side linebacker, number 51, came up to make the stop along with a strong safety, Jim Hudson. And it will be third down and short yardage, a little bit more than a yard for the first down for Oakland. John has come out once again. It's been ducking in and out of the crowd. The temperature in the middle 30. Blitzikoff to the right, Wells to the left. Third down and short yardage, remember, for Oakland. And Lamonic is going to throw for it, going across the line, tipped up in the air by Ralph Baker, and then it's out of the 30-yard line, and it is incomplete, and it is fourth down. Jim Simpson, Al DiRogata, Shea State in New York, the American Football League Championship, and the opportunity to go on to the Super Bowl. Ishai standing inside his tent to do the punting, gets the kick away, a low driving kick. Earl Christie watches it hit at the 45 and go out of bounds on the 41-yard line of New York, and the Jets take over once more. And so far, Al DiRogata, it has been that double wing with two slot backs against Oakland. It worked the first series of downs, it has not since. He may have to come out of it, as I mentioned before, or if he goes into it, we may see him trying to flare number 41, Matt Schnell. The coverage has been excellent. The Raiders have figured it out. They've now got their alignment the way they want their defensive alignment, man-to-man. Linebackers are making good shots, so either Namath comes out of it, goes to the conventional, or we might see him trying to swing, or possibly even pitch out to Matt Schnell against it. Six minutes, 37 seconds to go in the first quarter. New York took over the ball after a open punt against the win on the Raiders 43 and moved right on in, throwing that double slot formation at Oakland with a payoff pitch, a 14-yard pass to John Maynard. Since that time, New York has found itself deep in its own territory. This is the best field position they've had since the opening moments when they scored on their 41. And 
And Joe Namath has been unable to hit his receivers and unable to pick up another first down. The only first downs they've had have been in this scoring month. The Jets in their huddle and breaking from it now after a brief timeout. And now they are not in that double wing formation. They're a strong side left. The ball is handed to Snell, who picks up two yards out to the 43-yard line. And it'll be second down and eight. Getting up from the tackle is big Carlton Oates and Dan Birdwell. And Jim, on the far side of the field, they had Don Maynard, number 13, and George Sauer, both to that side. And the Raiders adjust by keeping Willie Brown to that side and then moving cornerback number 43, as they're doing now, George Atkinson to cover Sauer in the slot. Sauer split, and Maynard flank left. Boozer's back in as a setback, along with Emerson, or rather Matt Snell. Snell has the ball again in his head as he hits the line of scrimmage. And is knocked down as he gets out to the 46-yard line by Gus Otto, the right side linebacker, who was right there as Snell hit the line of scrimmage. That'll be third down and five from the 46 of New York. And now here's a situation where the Raiders playing the Jets to run the football or virtually in a 4-4 defense. Pete Landman, who has been playing for the weak side, number 87, uh, could be a real factor. It would be a matchup between Pete Landman, 87, and Roger Bird, number 21. The longest gain of the day for either team has been a pass to the tight end, Billy Cannon. Namath dropping straight back across the middle, and it pops in and out of the arms of Emerson Boozer, who is being thrown down by Ralph Oliver, the left side linebacker. Oliver didn't know the ball had gone out of the arms of Boozer, and he kept fighting him down. There are a few boos, but it is fourth down, and again, the Jets have failed to pick up a first down. But they lead in the ball game 7 to nothing, with 5 minutes and 18 seconds to go in the first quarter. Again, Atkinson goes deep to receive the punt. Roger Bird up close, and Curly Johnson to do the punting, standing on his own 31. Got from center. Johnson gets the boot away. High starting kick, and going down, hits it to 15. Goes down near the goal line and into the end zone. Atkinson chose not to play the ball. It hit at the 15, and for a moment the crowd thought, and so did I, that it might stop short of the goal line, but it went in, and so will come out to the 20 on the setback. First and 20 for the Oakland Raiders, who trail by seven. Tim, one of the very versatile football players for the Raiders, is there a defensive tackle or defensive end, wherever you want to play him, all leaguer Dan Birdwell. Dan was very important in that last play. Dan came out, lined up, head up on Pete Lyman, whom I think was the primary receiver, and cut him down at the line of scrimmage. Wells is to the left, but let the cough is flanked right. LaMonica on first down from the 20, hands to Charlie Smith, a speedy rookie from Utah, gets back toward the line of scrimmage and doesn't quite make it. He's thrown on the 18-yard line. Now Atkinson is over there, while Rochester is over there, and so is Ralph Baker. All three of them there to meet Charlie Smith, who took the hand off deep zero and went along the line of scrimmage, but not penetrating until he tried to turn the corner, and he's coming out, and Banazak has gone in. That's the way a defensive play should come off. Jerry Philbin moved across the line of scrimmage, and he cut down Gene Upshaw leading the play. Then you got that good inside-outside pursuit from Atkinson and Oliver. And Banazak is in for the first time, and Wells and Belitnikoff are to the left this time. Strong side left. They say LaMonica doesn't throw to his left. He's going to his right to Cannon. Can't hold on to the ball at the 30-yard line, and Cannon was being double-teamed. And now Jim Hudson is saying a few words to Billy Cannon. The official is moving it off the ball. And it will be third down and long yardage, about 12 from the 18th. And in there they've got now Pete Banizak, as Jim Simpson just called it. Pete came out of that backfield, went to the outside. He was covered by Larry Grantham. They had two men flying deep. It's very possible he may go to one of his backs. Again, Wells and Belitnikoff are to the left. Wells the flanker, Lipikoff split. Third down, Lamonica back to throw, and Wells has fallen down at the 31-yard line. And throwing the down and out, nobody was down and out. And it's incomplete, and it's fourth down. And what started out as a quick score for the New York Jets has come up to be simply seven and nothing of a defensive battle. And the New York Jets defense gets a hand as it goes off field. And an outstanding defensive battle, really, Jim, because these two teams know the opposite of each other so very well, and they're both in just great position. Mike Arshad is back inside his own five to do the punt. 
And as you keep in statistics, the biggest one today is on number of punts thus far. I kick your old Christy watches at the 45 of New York. Has it. Hit down at the 44. Immediately downfield was number 37, Preston Ryder Huber, a former fine player at the University of Georgia and a man that on a punt or kicking situation, you usually look for him to be downfield. Four minutes, ten seconds to go here at Shea Stadium in the first quarter with the Jets out in front, seven to nothing for the American Football League Championship. For the Jets, it's their first try. For their coach, we do back. As they say, he has been to the well before. He coached a couple of championship Baltimore teams in the National Football League. Now, Maynard and Sauer are strong left. Lamont split about five yards to the right. The ball is handed to Emerson Boozer. Across the 45, across the 50, and down to the 43 yard line of the Ocean Raiders. Before he's dragged down across the field by Willie Brown, the six year veteran from Bramley College. First down, and that's the first first down for the New York Jets since their opening series when they scored their touchdown. So it looks like probably the strategy that we'll see for the balance of this quarter is the New York Jets trying to run the football and running right into the teeth of what looks like a 4-4 of Roger Bird coming right up to the line of scrimmage. More than 63,000 are here. Tickets were impossible to get. Maynard brings him to the line of scrimmage. Sauer split a little bit left, and Maynard is flanked right. Maynard with a quick short over the middle, or rather to the sideline, to George Sauer, who steps out of bounds on the 35-yard line. Billy Brown to knock him out of bounds. And it's a pickup of about seven. It'll be second and three from the 35 of Oakland. And then that could be a very interesting matchup on the far side of the field because Billy Brown likes to play his tight. He's awfully good and very confident. But when you play George Sauer, that tight, it could be beaten. However, they're coming opposite now. Right on Lamont is left, and Sauer and Maynard are right. Long right. Second down and short yardage. There goes Snell straight ahead of his own right back. He's got the first down. Gets down to 30 on line down to the 28. Back was made there by Dan Connors, the middle linebacker. But not Snell, the former All-American from Ohio State. Injured much of his career with the New York Jets. Has picked up another first down. The Jets lead 7-0. 2 minutes, 45 seconds to go. The nearest that Oakland has come is a 45-yard field goal attempt by George Brandon to hit the crossbar. Brandon goes to the left. The Jet fans are now on their feet in front of us. Time to look and see how the Jets do on this play as they send Maynard and Sarah again to the right. Again, the ball is handed to Snell, running straight up. He gets down to the 25 and then is hurled back to the 29. Joe is really called, Joe Namath is really calling a fine game. They gave up on a double wing as each we called, or we called it. Uh, they are now going with a conventional type, although they're putting their speed to one side, and they're putting Lamont to the other side. Uh, they are now in the conventional. Lamont strong with Don Maynard. And it is second down seven from the 25. Towers put about seven yards to the left. Maynard flanked right. Maynard throwing over the head of Maynard at the 20 yard line. And he was in a matchup there with George Atkinson, the rookie from Morris Brown. Kent McLuhan, the All League cornerback, has been out most of the season and will not play in this game, nor will he play should the Raiders go on to the Super Bowl. Seven to nothing to score, one minute 48 seconds to go. First quarter. New York scored a touchdown, a 14 yard pass to Maynard. With less than four minutes gone in the football game. Maynard right, Sauer left. Third and seven. Maynard dropping straight back, looking lots of time. Fires the ball intended for Sauer. Just passed him in the end zone with Willie Brown, the right cornerback back there with him. I know you saw Willie Brown playing him off his side. Number 83, George Sauer, took it toward the middle. Dave Grace in 45 was covering him to the inside. Sauer takes it deep. He had him by by about a step, but that Willie Brown has been set is off the good. And out of fourth down, and Jim Turner has come in. Turner before today had 145 points. He's added one today for 146. This field goal attempt will be from the 33 yard line with Dave Turley holding. Ball is down, and Turner's kick is up. It is short, but it is short. field goal by Jim Turner, who now has 149 points on the team. Jim, you know, uh, as you look
look at the jets. That was an awfully important three points. You recall the field goal attempt by Blanda was short. It was the wind coming in to the, from the open end of the field that held it up just enough. And in 1 minute and 38 seconds, the Oakland Raiders will have the win at their back. Now it's going to become uh, a real battle, really, for that fine defensive team of the Jets to stop the Raiders going with the win. Well, as you said, Nero, Blanda's attempted field goal hit the crossbar, but there was another time when Boletnikov had broken past the defender, only to have the pass from Lamonica held up by the win. Long kick off with the winning of the by Joe Johnson and Johnny Smith watching to go out of the end zone. It's about to the 20-yard line, first and 10 from there. What big ooze and ahs or Curly Johnson's big foot. But remember, he was kicking, as Al said, with the open end of the Shea Stadium at his back. And the wind is whistling around the stadium. Now, the temperature is in the middle 30s. But it was worse than that earlier in the week. It got down to 12 degrees and it snowed. So we should be thankful. And it's a fine game, 10 to nothing New York. Each team has had the ball for 23 plays. But New York has the lead. 10 to nothing. LaMonica hands off to Hewitt Dixon. Starts around the right side. Picks up perhaps a yard or two. Getting to the 20, 21 yard line. Gary Philbin, the left defensive end, made the tackle along with number 22, Jim Hudson. That'll be second down and let's call it eight from the 22. The Jets, Philbin, Rochester, Elliott, and Diggs, the front four. Baker Atkinson, Branson, Linebackers, Sample, Hudson, Baird, and Beverly, the deep man. On second down eight, Monica dropping straight back to throw. Up front, now fires again, and Jennifer Warren Wells downfield. Over to Jimmy, was double covered back there by both safeties, Bill Baird and Jim Hudson. Well, the former selection of the Detroit Lions of the National Football League does give Oakland great outside speed among its receivers. And here's an awfully big third down and eight situation, Jim, because LaMonica must want Bailey to get this first down. Uh, he wants to win in the sack. He's got 56 seconds, and he doesn't want to turn it over and giving the ball to the Jets on the turnover. So uh, he may well decide to try to keep it short on a down now, working on one of those cornerbacks. Well, he's sending Ward Wells and Boletnikov to the left, strong left. Third down eight. LaMonica dropping straight back. Takes to Banazak. Now throws to Banazak coming out of the backfield. Grabs him and slapped out of the play. Banazak across the 20. He's got the first down. Out to the 33-34 yard line. And Darrell LaMonica has done what Aldi Rosado said he wanted to do. Gets the first down with 40 seconds left in the quarter. And the clock running. And what a beautiful call that was. He sent his two men to the left side, Jim, as you described. Well, then Bolitnikov deep. It looked like a, a, a passing situation, and suddenly that offensive line exploded to the left side, and you saw Banasak come out of there. Grantham tried to recover. He saw the screen coming. He was too late. This is probably the last play of this first quarter. New York leading 10 to nothing. LaMonica sends Blitnikoff to the right. Looks like a legal procedure may be charged against the Raiders as all linemen were moving, but the ball had not been snapped. So that'll cost them yards as the Raiders mark back with 10 seconds left. Walter Fitzgerald is the referee, George Young, the umpire, the headlines and Tony Fideri, Al Sabato, the line judge, Hugh Gabbard, the back judge, and the field judge is Bob Dower. A legal procedure charged against Oakland has been refused. The ball still at the 33-yard line. And it is second down and 10 as there was no gain on the play. And of course the clock stops for the penalty. Letnikoff goes right, Wells to the left, on second down 10. 10 to nothing, New York leads, first quarter almost over, LaMonica back to throw, across the middle of Letnikoff, he's got a first down out near midfield at the 49-yard line, and time will run out with the Raiders nearly at midfield and their best drive of the day as the gun sounds. And that's the end of the first quarter, the score, the New York Jets 10, the Oakland Raiders nothing. This is Al DeRogatis along with Jim Simpson here uh, at Shea Stadium. Ten for the New York Jets, nothing for the Oakland Raiders. The first play of the second quarter coming up, and here's Simpson. LaMonica sends Wells to the left, Boletnikov to the right. The first quarter took 45 minutes, maybe 46 to play. LaMonica dropping straight back to throw. To Hewitt Dixon, former tight end, now the fullback. Dixon across midfield, across the 40, across the 35, inside the 30-yard line, down to the 29-yard line. And that is the second time in two plays that LaMonica has gone to a back coming out of his backfield 
And the second time, he has picked up Big Yachty. Now trailing 7-0 as they are, Dero, here come the Oakland Raiders at the 29. And they really are coming. He fooled Ralph Baker badly on that play, and as you call it, he's using his back very well. And the wind is at their back now. Warren Wells goes to the left, let the cop to the right. Donizak is in there, not Charlie Smith, along with Hewitt Dixon. Monica back to throw, going long on the down and out, but again, Warren Wells has slipped and fallen inside the 15 and was sitting down at about the 13-yard line. That's the number to be sitting on, 13, as the ball flew over his head, incomplete. It'll be second down, 10 from the 29 of New York. All of the scoring in the first quarter, 14-yard pass from Namath Tomato. For a touchdown, a 33-yard field goal by Jim Turner. He now has 149 points this year. Wells to the left. Let him cross to the right again. A big split in the backfield between Banazak and Dixon. Slavonica calls signals on second down. Stopping straight back to throw. Has time. Fires for Bolitnikov. He is going to get in for the five touchdown. And Johnny Campbell hits a tackle at the 10. And there's the play. That's the play that John Sample must stop or you're not going to beat the Oakland Raiders. A simple a post pattern. Politnikoff is downfield about seven, then takes it over the middle. Jim Hudson is trying to recover, trying to help him to the inside, but then they're swinging a back, or they're taking the tight end, Billy Cannon, and crossing him, pulling Jim Hudson out of there. Fine play. And now the officials are stepping in and calling for a new football, I believe. But as Zero was telling you again, and it is our reminder that the word has been around, and it's not something the coaches tell us. It's something that we see by doing American Football League games time after time. But Johnny Sample does have trouble defending to the inside, as he did then. Lambo's kick is up now, and it is good. And there's time out on the field here in the second quarter with the score. The New York Jets, 10, Oakland, 7. Earl Christie is on the right. Bake Turner on the left. Deep for the New York Jets. And now the ball has been blown up to the 42-yard line. It may be that they may pull in someone to put his finger on top of the football like we used to kick off in the street years ago zero, and just hold it there. The kicking tee is almost useless with this kind of win. Well, Mike has set the ball up again and will attempt to kick off again. This time his kick is good. It's off and Christie comes out to the five yard line, takes it on the four, across the 10, running to his right, across the 20, good speed. Dragged down from behind, first of all, by Ralph Miller, the left side linebacker, and finally hit him down John Roderick, number 41, excellent field position out near the 37-yard line. The Jets, who completely dominated the first quarter, leading 10 to nothing, now lead by three points, but for the first time today, they are going into the teeth of this strong win. They send George Sauer out to the left, Don Maynard to the right. Boozer and Snell the setbacks about a yard apart in the backfield. Name of calling signal. Joe with a long count at the line of scrimmage. Now the lineman is set. The ball is handed to Snell, who slipped as he started and is knocked back to the 35-yard line. It'll be second down, 12. Jim, looking at that defensive secondary, the front is still remaining pretty much the same. That's the Oakland Raiders playing a front four four-man line in an odd situation. The three linebackers are concentrating on the middle, but you'll now find that the Oakland Raiders secondary is rolling to the strong side, leaving a weakness to their weak side. I think it, it looks like they're giving them is the opportunity. They're trying to force name it to go throw to one of his backs. George Atkinson still has that job on Don Maynard across the way. Maynard gained over 200 yards last time out. Name it back on second down and 12 to throw. It's throwing to Snell, who this time drops the ball at the 39. Roger Bird's responsibility, Matt Snell, and Roger's now holding up his arms, saying I didn't see him because Snell was there all by himself. Jim, it's amazing how identical, really, these offenses have been. You recall, as you described, the fact that LaMonica went to Hewitt Dixon out of his backfield, and he went to Pete Banizak, and now we find uh, Joe Namath being forced to go to uh, Matt Snell out of the backfield. So Bill Mathis, who's in there now with him, could be interesting. The ball has been blown from the line of scrimmage. Back a few yards, and now the referee puts it down. Third down, 12. Namath back to throw. It is complete for his tight end, Pete Lavins. And Lavins is out across the 45-yard line of the 47. First down for the New York Jets. 
Big third down and 12 play, and Joe Namath went to his tight end, Pete Lamons. Now they marked the ball at the 46. But in any event, it's a first down for the Jets. And the seven to score, New York leading the American Football League Championship from Shea Stadium in New York. We're in the first half with 12 minutes and 45 seconds left. A chilly afternoon. Temperature in the middle 30s. High wind. Sour comes to the left. Mena to the right. On first and ten. Name it dropping straight back. Looking downfield. Lots of time still. Firing down the sidelines and headed for Sour, but... It is underthrown, and again, that is Joe Namath's first experience going against the win with a deep pattern, Hero. Now, you're sure not going to complete many against Willie Brown because he, again, Jim, is the most challenging uh, cornerback that you're going to see. He goes right up to George Sauer, despite George's good speed, plays him nose-to-nose -nose downfield. Didn't There was never more than a half yard separating them, so just some fine defensive play by number 24, and he sure deserves to be all league. To show you how the day has gone, the lights are on here at Chase Stadium and have been, and yet the sun is shining brilliantly. But there have been dark clouds that have gone over from time to time. That has made it seem like late afternoon, whereas New York time, it's nearly just 2 o'clock. Name it, on second down 10, hands the ball to Emerson Boozer, comes across the left side, gets inside the 50-yard line, down to about the 48, shy of the first down. It'll be third down and five. I think I said Boozer, that is Bill Mathis, the nine-year veteran from Clemson who has checked into the backfield for the first time today. Mathis does not have a good rushing average, less than three yards, but Bill has scored a bundle of touchdowns, five altogether running the football. Maynard goes to the right, Lamons comes to the left, and now they have gone with Turner in there for the moment as the flanker. And now they're taking too much time. Joe Namath took a look at that defense, saw Roger Bird, number 21, way over to the right side. Roger now is isolated man-to-man -man on Pete Lamont. You saw number 24, I'm uh, sorry, we saw number 24, uh, Willie Brown, uh, who ordinarily plays the right side, switching over to the left. Willie Brown is now back to the right side. Star left, Maynard right. Third down now, and 10 after the five-yard penalty for too much time. Namath with a lot of time, has the ball hit at the line of scrimmage, and down it goes on the attempted pass. And it'll be fourth down and 10. 10 to 7 the score, the New York Jets. And the Jets are going against the wind. And there's a flag on the play, and Ben Davidson has already walked inside the 30-yard line anticipating that they're going to take it. But now he's coming back because it makes it fourth down, and New York will have to kick the ball away to Oakland and against the wind. Holding penalty has been refused. And, Jim, despite the fact that both teams are having, are having a little difficulty, it isn't because of that great pass rush because the offensive lines are both doing a good job. I can recall Namath being decked one time and LaMonica down one. Charlie Johnson will kick the ball away to George Atkinson. Atkinson has gained more than 1,200 yards, as we said, returning punts and kickoffs this year. He's got a lot of speed. Johnson's kick against the wind just travels about 20 yards and dies on the 31-yard line of the Oakland Raiders. And now I believe, for those who do not know it, Dero, that indeed, here at Shea Stadium, the wind is a big, big factor. There's time out on the field with a score. New York 10 and Oakland 7. Say goodbye to all Lang Syne. Hello to Monitor 69. Bring your friends and gather around for a portable package with a brand new sound. I'm Gene Rayburn and I've got a store of music, death, surprise galore. Serious thoughts with Dr. Brothers. Comedy time with the Smothers Brothers. Famous guests like Miss Joan Crawford, David Niven, or Peter Lawford. Sporting events are covered, too. The astronauts and how they flew. Every hour, without fail, the news is covered in detail. The newest movies get reviewed, and the college crowd gets interviewed. Music, too, we must relate, is always new and up-to-date. Tula Clark, Ford Jackson, Jill, the Nashville Brass, and the Old Cow Sales. Swing your partner, do -si do Tune us in, and away we go. We travel, too, so come along. We'll take you right where you belong on my Monitor on NBC.
Jim Simpson with Aldi Rogatis. As Boletnikoff comes to the right, Warren Wells to the left. Big series of downs for the Raiders and the Jets. LaMonica hands off to Banaszak, who may have gotten a yard and no more. Barnell Gordon has moved in at left cornerback, Johnny Sample, the defensive captain, against whom that 29-yard touchdown pass was caught by Boletnikoff, has gone out. It is second down nine for the Raiders from the 31. LaMonica dropping back to throw. Throwing downfield and for Boletnikoff. He's all by himself, but it's overthrown. As LaMonica for the first time, Aldi Rogatis is going with the strong wind of his back. That, that's right, and uh, Fred Bolitnikoff faked that little inside move. Cornell Gordon, so very concerned about it, was playing the inside move, and Bolitnikoff kept it going deep. You'll also notice 46, Bill Baird, is double covering, so they're really disguising it extremely well. Both teams are, but they're doing a great deal of double covering. We said this was a big series of downs. Well, here we come to third down and nine. Bolitnikoff is to the right. Wells is to the left. The Raiders have the ball on their own 31. It's 10-7. LaMonica dropping straight back. Going for the sidelines to Bolitnikoff and overfires him again at the 42-yard line. Bolitnikoff that time was after the first down. He had to get to the 41. He went down to the 41 and turned up to the 42, but the ball was thrown to the open bench. And so the Jets have held... And Mike Eyshide comes in to kick it away to Earl Christie and Bill Bear. And there again, Jim, you saw an indication of some fine offensive line blocking. Shue, Harvey, Otto, uh, uh, Suez, and Upshaw. No one's getting close to uh, Darrell LaMonica. Eyshide stepping back to his own 16-yard line. Gets the pass from center. He'll be kicking with the win and gets a gorgeous kick away. Back goes Bill Bear all the way to his own 20. Up to the 25, going to the left toward the sideline. Flag goes down. And so does Bill Baird as he crosses the 30 out to the 33-yard line. Bill Rodemaker made the stop, but there's a flag on the play. Could be clipping. Gus Otto is back to talk it over. And the Jets have already broken onto the field inside their own 15-yard line as Walt Fitzgerald, the head referee from Boston College, steps it off and tells us it is a clip. And the ball is placed down on the 12-yard line. And now the Jets again in their own territory, inside their own 15, and against the win. 10 minutes, 34 seconds to go in the half. New York 10, Oakland 7. Lamons coming to the left. Maynard and Sauer both go to the right. Mathis and Snell are setbacks. Namath dropping straight back to throw. Lots of time across the middle. Almost intercepted by Dan Connors, the middle linebacker. Intended for Pete Lamons, the tight end. And Connors had it right in his arms and dropped it. It'll be second down and 10. Ben Davidson was the man that was the first to get to Joe Namath. But zero, the protection for both passes, as you said, the offensive line is doing a tremendous job. You know, Jim, it may not seem significant, but when you're playing defensive football, it's great to have the win that you're back. And, you know, as big as they might be, and there are some awfully big ones, it's good to be rushing it. That was a big first down play because now you're going to really see a rush come. Second down and 10. Namath dropping straight back. Firing for Sauer. He's got him across the 20-yard line up to the 24-yard line. That's enough for a first down for George Sauer. As Woody Brown knocked him out of bounds. First and ten for the Jets. They're out in front by three in this American Football League championship. The pride, the prestige, and the money that goes with it, and the chance, of course, for the Super Bowl. A 14-yard touchdown pass to Don Maynard. A 33-yard field goal by Jim Turner made it 10-0 New York in the first quarter. A 29-yard touchdown pass to Fred Bolitnikoff from La Monica made it 10-7 here in the second quarter. And that's exactly where we are now. Sauer is wide right. Namath hands the ball off. To Matt Snell, his fullback, who gets across the 25 and out to about the 26. Gus Otto in on the tackle there, along with number 21, Roger Bird, who came up from the secondary, and Carl Oates, the big right tackle. And Jim, I'm trying to decide or figure out when it is that they're using Roger Bird to the weak side. It looks like they're using him to the weak side when Bill Mathis is set to the opposite side. They're switching that defensive backfield very well. Sauer left, Maynard right. Maynard has not caught one on George Atkinson, the rookie cornerback, yet. Namath calling signals, dropping straight back, firing for Sauer, who coming out of the backfield, and Woody Brown throws him out of bounds as he crosses the 30 to the 31. A gain of about three yards on the play. 
And it'll be third down and four. Nine minutes, 41 seconds to go. We haven't seen Joe Namath or LaMonaco. It has not at least appeared that they're using many automatics. But I think the next time we see a situation where you have Lamons isolated, a uh, one-on-one -on, -one on Roger Bird, we might see him go to uh, Lamons rather. Well, after that long pass by Namath that was held up by the win, he's gone on the down-and-outers to Sauer on the left side. Big play here, third down, and a short four to go. Namath took a long time, hands to Snell. Snell has got the first down. Looks like he might be hit. Ball runs loose, but they say no, the whistle has blown. As Mathis recovered the fumble. I think I said Snell, Mathis had the football. In any event, it is the first down. And now we'll correct it and say that it was Snell who did have the football, and Mathis was right there with him, leading the block. And what a great block he made also. Number 31, a, a real fine man to have in your backfield. A nine-year veteran, as we said, from Clemson. Billy Mathis, he's been with the Jets a long, long time. Now on first down, Namath dropping very deep and looking long, but throwing shorter to Lamon. Bird tried to put a good defensive play on him, reaching over in front of it, but could not contain him from catching the football at midfield. It's first down at the 50. It's a simple cross pattern, but you have Don Maynard going deep, and George Atkinson has to cover him deep, and that's the situation where you're isolating that tight end on the strong side safety. You has the responsibility of covering him. Anyhow, Pete Lamon's got perfect position, a great pass by Joe Nance. Lamon, each time he's caught the football today, has gone for first down. Sauer comes to the left, and this time Maynard is also on the left as the flanker. Strong left, first down from midfield, 10-7 New York, second quarter. Namath calling signals. He split his right end. The tight end, Lamon's about five yards. Namath pumps one, throws, and underthrows Sauer at the 47-yard line. And if George had caught that one, Willie Brown was just about to lower the boom. Now the sun has disappeared behind the clouds again, and now you can actually feel here in New York that the temperature is in the middle 30s. The ball is resting squarely on the 50-yard line. Eight minutes and nine seconds to go in the half. Boozer started out the day as a setback, but when they went to the double wing, they brought in Big Turner and took him out. Boozer came back in and has gone out again, and Bill Mathis is in the backfield with Matt Snell, who's having a pretty good day as the fullback. Second down, 10. Namath dropping straight back and deep again. Pass rushes on, blitzing, and he tried to get the ball to Lamons, and he also tried to get off of the way of Gus Otto, who was charging from the right side. Joe Namath has not as yet used the screen pass. The play that was very, uh, it would have been ideal, actually, actually in the last situation with Gus Otto firing up in there. He has not used the screen too much. He has liked to come with his cross. He has not gone to Bill Mathis. You know, Bill has been a very fine receiver for him, especially looking at the play of the linebackers. The linebacker has to cover that back coming out of the backfield. Well, eight members of the Jets will be in the American Football League All-Star Game on January 19th, and nine members of the Raiders. Here's a big third down play. Namath is back to throw. Lots of time. Now he's running out of it as everybody was covered. Running around the right side, and he's going to pick up the first down inside the 40 and goes out of bounds. quarterbacks that don't like to run, but Joe Namath is a different Joe Namath. He's doing all the things right this afternoon. Even that incompleted pass earlier, he was in trouble, and he threw it at the man, but hearing an interception, he fired it into the ground. That was a fine run. Seven minutes, 53 seconds to go in the half. In this game, for the right to go to the Super Bowl, Maynard goes to the right, Sauer comes to the left. First down 10 from the 36 of Oakland. 10 to 7, New York leads. And Namath has his Jets on the move at the moment. Namath hands off to Snell. Snell is joggling at the line of scrimmage. Now finds a hole. It gets down to the 30-yard line. A pickup of six. It'll be second down four. Gus Otto and Dan Connors, the middle and right side linebackers, made the stop right at the 30. What a pretty run. Carlton Oates, number 85, and number 83, Ben Davidson, were right there. Matt hit straight up, stopped, bearded to the outside, and really recovered, recovered extremely well. Now you can hear the Jet fans saying, go, go, go. Maynard and Lamon 
Jones go to the right. Dower comes out here to the left. Second down and four. Namath dropping straight back. Lots of time. Looks. Dower goes down and does not have the football. George Sauer winds up tackling Willie Brown. Now Sauer went down and out. Namath looked and then waited for a moment, Dero, and then fired straight down, realizing that Sauer would cut back. But so did Willie Brown. Didn't Sauer make a great play? He wasn't really trying to tackle him. He was trying to do both, actually, Jim. He was going to knock the ball down. Willie Brown was in perfect position for an interception. So Chalk went up, an offensive player, knocking down the pass intentionally. Third down and four. Maynard goes to the right. Sauer comes out to the left. Mathis and Boozer, the setbacks. Lassiter, Birdwell, Oates, Davidson, the front four for Oakland. Oliver, Connors, out of the linebackers. Atkinson, Bird, Grayson, and Brown, the deep men. And now they have sent... Maynard over to the right and brought Lamons over to the left. And there's a mix-up. Maynard still has the ball, and down he goes for the first time today. Going back to the 38-yard line. There was some confusion. If it was in my voice, it's because the Jets were also confused about their offensive set. Not so much the offensive set, Jim, as the fact that the defense was so very unusual. Uh, they had him jamming completely. They had Roger Bird up at the line of scrimmage. Uh, a big play, a very big play. That, that charge that came from Ben Davidson, although they're still going for the field goal, makes it a lot tougher. Well, from the 45, George Flanders' kick was not long enough. It hit the crossbar. From the 44, Jim Turner will try it. It is 10 to 7 New York. He'll be kicking against a strong wind. The kick is up and will fall way short. Taken back there by Grayson. Grayson comes out and does not quite get to the 20-yard line where it would have gone. He was hit by Richardson. The tackle on the play, and it'll be placed down at the 18. It'll be first down and 10. There's timeout on the field with the score. The New York Jets, 10. The Oakland Raiders, 7. This comb's gliding through my hair like it doesn't have teeth. Hair, you have a friend up there. Gotta be an ace. second half, Al DeRogatis, and here's Jim Simpson. Warren Wells to the left, Lindenkoff to the right, first down from the 18 of Oakland, they trail by three here late in the second quarter. LaMonica rolling to the right, looked as though he wanted to hand the ball off, and now I know what he wanted to do. He simply ran out of bounds when he realized that he was winding up with the football, and big Paul Rochester, 250 pounds of him from Michigan State, was giving chase. There, LaMonica, five for 20 this afternoon. And if that sounds like not much, 25% of his passes, remember the whole first quarter, he was passing against the wind. And nobody's been able to do that successfully today. Let the cough comes to the right, Wells to the left. Six and a half minutes left, first quarter. Banazak and Dixon, the setback. LaMonica dropping straight back on second down 10. Little flip pass to Dixon who cannot hold on to the football. Incomplete pass. Many thought that perhaps was a fumble by Dixon, but it ruled an incomplete pass. Philbin, Rochester, Elliott, Biggs, the front four for New York. Baker, Atkinson, and Grantham, the linebackers. Sample is out at the cornerback. Cornell Garden has come in. Jim Hudson, Bill Baird, and Randy Beverly, the deep man. And Jim, Randy Beverly is giving an awful lot of room on the far side of the field to number 81, Warren Wells, so we might look for Warren Short. Third down 10. At this point, Beverly is about 10 yards off the line of scrimmage. LaMonica is back, but he's throwing to Belitnikoff off his hands at the 30-yard line. 
He was being double covered there by Cornell Gordon and the linebacker Al Atkinson. And the Jets' defense is held again. Fourth down and ten to go. Six minutes, 20 seconds to go in the half. You're at Shea Stadium with more than 63,000 looking on. Tickets have been impossible. And, Jim, that was the biggest defensive series, really, for the Jets, because now they have a chance to get good field position and kill as much time going against the win. High shot gets a low pass from center and a good pass rush, but with that win, drives Baird back inside the 30-yard line, running to his right. Now comes straight back up the middle, and down he goes as he gets out across the 30-yard line to about the 33. Jim Harvey was one of the men downfield on the play, and Bill Buttness, a reserve middle linebacker, is the other. First down and 10 for the Jets. Joe Willie Namath comes on field with six minutes going, and the clock's still running in the half. The right to go on to the Super Bowl in the Orange Bowl, and you'll hear that right here on NBC Radio exclusively also. Sauer comes to the left. Maynard goes to the right. Lamons, the tight end, is on the right side. Maynard is blowing on his hands. It is cold out on the field. Crowd getting up to see as Namath hands the ball off to Snell. Comes around the left side, across the 35, across the 40, to the 41. Dave Grayson made the stop there, along with big Carlton Oates. And another great block by Bill Mathis on Gus Otto, number 34. So it looks like the Jets are going to play it. They're going to play keeping it on the ground as much as possible, although they're in a very fine gambling kind of a situation right here. The first quarter took 45 minutes to play. This quarter will take considerably less time. Maynard to the right. Sauer now jogs out a step or two more to the left as the split end. Ball is handed instead to Mathis, and Mathis gets away from a tackle of Bill Connors, the big middle linebacker, number 55, and then he is contained by Isaac Lasseter. Very close to a first down, so close that they'll measure. This is our first measurement of the afternoon. Joe Namath is standing looking on. Boozer has checked back in, and Mathis has gone out. They place it down. First down, New York Jets at the 43-yard line of the Jets. And, Jim, both teams have been coming almost exclusively with drop-back passes. They're staying in the pocket, very little play action, although when you see a team running the football like the Jets, they could come with a fake run and go with a play-action pass. Only one time today has a quarterback been gotten, and that was Namath on a good rush. Joe goes back down, first down, looking back, firing long for Sauer, and Billy Patel was tackling him before he got the football, but Sauer caught the ball anyway, so there is no penalty on the play inside the 35 down to the 33. And what's the only thing I'm sorry, Dero, that Willie could do, and that is simply just tackle him because he had him beaten. And Jim, what just tremendous courage, really, on the part of... Uh, uh, Joe Namath. Joe was getting a huge rush put on him by number 85, Carlton Oates. That ball was not released. Carlton drove right through him. Namath stuck right in the pocket and laid it up to Sauer. Ball is spotted at the 32-yard line. 10 to 7, New York. First half. Four and a half minutes to go. New York on the move against the strong, strong win. Strong side to the right now with Sauer and Maynard over there. Namath back. Lots of time to throw. Going to his left to Lamont. Bird is there. The ball is out of bounds at the two-yard line. And Roger Bird, looking back into the sun, had a little trouble in picking up the ball. But fortunately for the Raiders, at least, the ball was overthrown. And you saw number 55, Dan Connors, and number 34, Gus Otto, way downfield deep. Uh, we, we mentioned earlier, Jim, that Joe has not gone to his backs as much as LaMonica. His backs can catch that football. Mathis can catch it, and so can Boozer. So... Um, we've got five potentially dangerous receivers. Maynard goes to the right. Sauer, who, by the way, after that pass he caught and went out of bounds, is covered with mud, is to the left. This is second down and ten. Namath takes the handoff, now throws over the middle to Lamont, down to the 30-yard line. And this was all Joe could do to do that because, again, he was getting a big pass rush. Grayson made the stop. He was thrown back to the 30, but they spotted the ball just over the 29. Mathis and Boozer continue to alternate in that backfield now. Boozer has gone out. Mathis is coming in. Four minutes left in the half. 10 to 7, New York. Whoever has had the wind at his back has scored. The Jets in the first quarter 
The Raiders in the second, but the Jets now would like to reverse that trend on third down seven. Sauer left, Maynard right. Namath calling signals from the 28, dropping straight back. Looking, firing across the way, and not able to hold on to it as Bill Mathis. Covered by the right side linebacker, Gus Otto. And as Aldi Rogata said, Mathis, normally a fine receiver, but dropped that football. And in that play, uh, Joe Namath went with a five-man pass pattern. He had both Matt Schnell circling to the right side, Bill Mathis to the left, and his flanker in two ends going deep. Now, having had his field goal attempt from the 44 way short, Jim Turner comes in and will try one this time from just over the 36, kicking against the wind. We keep mentioning the wind, but it is a, a primary importance in this ball game today. Meridian is holding, and from the 36, Turner tries, and it is... Jim, we see how important that penalty was earlier because rather that big play that was uh, made earlier by Ben Davidson that forced the Jets to kick from just a little further back because as Jim Simpson called it, that made it, Jim, but it sure didn't make it by much. 13 to 7 the score now. The Jets are out in front. And as we said, that's the first time a team going against the win has been able to score. The sun has come out again here at Shea Stadium. Across the way, the New York Jets bench huddling in the darkness of the stadium with their green cloaks on. And on this side of the field, the Oakland Raiders, nearly to a man on their feet, looking for the kickoff as Charlie Smith, who started this game but has not been playing much since. They've had Banazak in there as a running back and George Atkinson go deep. Now they've decided not to go deep. They're the deepest of the Raiders, but they're across the five and near the eight for this kickoff against the wind. George Atkinson takes it at the 10, bobbles it for a moment, comes across the 20, has great speed, across the 30, cuts to the outside and gets to the 40, loses the football, and the Jets have recovered. But the referee is standing back at the 41 saying, no, sir, the whistle had blown when the football popped loose. We view back on the far sideline, he is hot. And if he's not zero, he's the only one everybody else is told. The huddle they come with Wells to the left. Three minutes, 15 seconds to go. The Jet Crowd doesn't like it. The Raider fans, I'm sure, are happy. The Monica dropping straight back with time, looking, firing, and no good. Intended for Politnikov, and that time, Cornell Gordon was covering deep, but it was the left side linebacker, Ralph Baker, that had the immediate responsibility. Second down. And once again, we find that familiar situation where the defensive secondary, Jim, is concerned about the bomb. LaMonica is not throwing to his left, uh, really. There's a great deal of room over there. He could circle his back. He could come with a screen. So, well, let's see what he does. Now Warren Wells and Fred Malepnikoff go to the left. Strong side left. Billy Cannon, the tight end on the right side. Banazak and Dixon, the setbacks. LaMonica on second down. Back throwing. And it is caught by Dixon, his fullback, who is finally tackled by Cornell Gordon, but he's got a first down across the 45, down to the 41-yard line. And Jim, with all that speed on the left side, Bolitnikoff and Warren Wells, the deep men, as we said, have been dropping back, and that means the back, when he comes out of there, a little circle or a little uh, circle end up pattern that was just run by number 35, Hewitt Dixon, becomes a real big play. Two minutes, 39 seconds to go in the half. 13 to 7, New York, but the Raiders are now on the move. Monica dropping straight back to throw. Throws to his right. And Jennifer Bolitnikoff, he's got it and run out of bounds as he hits inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. Cornell Gordon threw him out of bounds. And no matter who is over there, Dero, whether it be Gordon or Sample, they're going to have trouble with Fred Bolitnikoff. They sure are. He's awfully tough. And Ralph Baker, as you've been describing, Jim, is dropping off. Now, when you see Ralph Baker dropping off like that to the strong side, you wonder whether or not a Pete Banaszak who's lining up there might now circle over the middle. Well, Banaszak is set off to the right, put a good five or six yards away from Dixon. Monica going back. Little swing pass intended for Dixon. It was not a screen pass at all as Monica got... Partial rush, but at that time, Dero, Banazak was circling across the middle of the Jet secondary. It was an interesting play action pass because they had to respect the move of uh, Pete Banazak coming out of that backfield. Two minutes, 25 seconds to go in the half. 
second down and ten. Everybody on this side of the stadium in the lower deck below us are on their feet watching. Warren Wells to the left. So is Politnikov. Monica looking left. Throwing across there has well over steps out of bounds at the 15. That's not enough for the first down. It'll be third down on short yardage. And there's a play that he could be completing all afternoon because Randy Beverly, although Bill Baird was right there, Beverly was covering deep on Bolitnikov. They're giving Warren Wells tremendous amounts of room to that side. Third down and about three and a half to go. And Charlie Smith has come into the backfield now for Oakland. Banazak comes out, and apparently Smith has come in with the play. Now, let's see. Politnikov and Wells both come to the right this time. Smith, who caught a pass to beat New York in a game several weeks ago, comes out of the backfield. LaMonica instead throws to Dixon up short, and Baker is there to knock him down. At the 20, a loss of five. The clock is running. We'll have the two-minute warning in just a moment. Alden Oates is coming back in, and with fourth down and the win at their backs, the Oakland Raiders will try to get on the board now with George Blanda kicking for the first time today with the win. He missed one from 45 yards out against the win, and now we'll have one considerably shorter with the win at his back. And there's a two-minute warning, so there is a momentary pause on the field, Aldi Regattas, and this game has been far from disappointing. Jim Simpson with Aldi Regattas at Chase Stadium in New York, and it is 13 to 7, the two-minute warning. New York's Jets scored the first time they got their football, the payoff pass, 14 yards to Don Maynard. It went down and out into the end zone. Later on, Jim Turner added a 33-yard field goal to make it 10 to nothing at the end of the quarter. Then, when Oakland got the win at its back, there was a 29-yard touchdown pass to Boletnikov as eluded Johnny Sample's tackle to go in for the score. And then Jim Turner, on his second try against the win for a field goal, hit one from 36 yards out to make it 13 to 7. And now we come, as LaMonica trots over to the bench, he will also hold the football for George Planter. We come to the chance for the Raiders to add three points. And I said, Aldi Regattas, this is far from a disappointing championship game. A lot of excitement. And now from the 27th, Blanda will try to draw three points closer to the New York Jets. The Monica to hold. The ball is down, and Blanda's kick is up. A lot of foot, and it is perfect. And it is 13 to 10. Jim, you're absolutely right. It is far from one, uh, from a disappointing football game. It is an outstanding football game. It's not that easy playing against uh, against the wind the way Namath now finds himself and the way LaMonica found himself uh, early in the football game. Both defensive units deserve a tremendous amount of credit. As Jim Simpson has been describing, the offensive lines have done remarkably well protecting for the passers. Uh, the Jets came with a double wing early. The Oakland Raiders made the adjustment, stopped it, forced the Jets into a different kind, a traditional kind of an offense. The New York Jets have moved the ball on the ground, moved it in the air, and so have the Oakland Raiders. Big Turner, Earl Christie deep, his eye shot kicks off. Wind at his back, driving Turner into the end zone, and Christie's there with him. He takes the football and quickly drops to one knee. Well, it is 13 to 10. The ball will come out to the 20. This is just the first half. There is halftime entertainment, of course. There is the complete second half of this football game. And if you're wondering, as we have been here in the booth, and it's a long way to go, may not happen, but if it's a tie, stick around, sudden death. And, Jim, here's a very big play, and I'm talking about the first down play because it's, it depends on what he does here. Uh, obviously, that it dictates the second, but he could be uh, passing, and there could be interceptions. Sour left. Let, uh, rather Maynard right and Boozer and Snell are setbacks the ball is handed to Boozer and Boozer still on his feet takes the tackle gets out across the 30 to the 35 Lasseter finally caught up to him Boozer was stopped at the line of scrimmage and suddenly first loose and went from the 20 up to the 35 and that was big Ben Davidson that hit Emerson Boozer from the side and hit him real well as Roger Bird comes off the football field looks like Roger Bird caught a heel he is holding his left arm. Howie Williams goes in as one of the safety men. Sauer comes to the left. Maynard to the right. Namath dropping straight back on first down. Firing, and it's to Maynard. Out of bounds. He caught it. Out across the 45 to the 47. 
And I will watch that clock for you. One minute, 17 seconds left in the half. And here come the Jets. And the Oakland Raiders are now hurting at that strong side safety. Uh, uh, this Powers, who would ordinarily be in there, Jim, is also hurt. Warren Powers, number 20. Roger Bird is out of there, so Joe may decide to go to Pete Lemons. They're getting their money's worth today, dear all. This first half will have taken an hour and a half to play. Namath hands off to Boozer again, and Otto, the right side linebacker, is right there to throw him for a loss. Back inside the 45 to the 44 of New York. Clock is continuing to run. One minute and five seconds left of the half. 13 to 10, New York. Joe Namath is going to use up all the time. He doesn't want to give that football back to the Raiders with the win. Maynard to the right, Shaw to the left. And Namath at the line of scrimmage taking all the time in the world. Now drops straight back. Now drops back a little bit more. Now fires right past Sauer on the down and out at the 50-yard line and into the open bench. And it'll be third down and 12. The sun is still out, but now beginning to drop behind the closed end of Shea Stadium here in New York. Mathis comes in. Boozer goes out. The backfield for the New York Jets. 44 seconds to go in the half. And again, Sauer left, and again, Maynard right. But this time, Boozer is set in a slot left. And now, Namath backs him up. Almost alongside of Matt Snell. And now, Namath has the football and drops straight back. Lots of time. He's going to Sauer under thrown. At the 37-yard line, he was double-covered, and Namath took quite a shot from Isaac Lasseter after releasing the football. <laughs> he is now full of dirt himself and walks off the field. It's fourth down. Billy Johnson in the kick against the wind. Atkinson calls for a fair catch, watches it bounce. It goes over his head inside the 15, down to the 11-yard line. 18 seconds. LaMonica very slow. He may not even try to get a playoff. Dixon looking back. They're actually asking the official back there, looking at the watch. Eight seconds. Slowly to the line of scrimmage. Six seconds left. Five, four. The Monica simply standing there. Two, and he lets the clock run out. That's it. That's the end of the first half. And the score is New York 13, Oakland 10. And in the third quarter, Oakland will have the win to its back. The Jets in the final quarter. Eyeside kick is deep, but not too deep as Turner takes it, fumbles it, picks it up on the one. Across the 10, out to the 15, that's one tackle, gets across the 20, and out to the 24 yard line. Before he is knocked down there by Preston Rattleyuber, who is down on nearly every tackle. Also in on the tackle for the Oakland Raiders was Pete Banizak. Now it is first down from the 24 yard line. 13 to 10 to score. The New York Jets. The right to go to the Super Bowl. Lasseter, Birdwell, Oates, and Davidson. The front four for Oakland, Oliver, Connors, and Otto. The linebackers, Atkinson, Grayson, Williams, and Brown, the deep man. Namath on first down from the 24. Elects to throw. He pumps once and cannot get rid of the football. And he is dropped back at the 20-yard line. Back there was Big Ben Davidson, number 83. And when I say big, if you're not familiar with the American Football League, Ben is 6'7", 275. Second down and 14. And Jim, the football game might well be determined right here because the New York Jets twice now have been asked to go against the, uh, against the win. And the second quarter, now here in the third quarter, they just can't afford to give the ball to the Raiders too soon. Second down from the 20. Handed the football and he gets back to about the 22. Starr and Lamons are your ends. Hill and Herman, your tackles. Salamini and Rasmus and the guards and Schmidt at center for New York. Boozer and Snell the setbacks. Maynard is the flanker and Joe Namath is the quarterback. And here comes that big play, third down, 11. And also, Jim, good news for the Oakland Raider fans because Roger Bird, number 21, who went out in the second quarter with an injured shoulder is back in the football game. Lamons comes to the left. Maynard to the right. Sauer is flanked right. The 
third down. Namath back to throw. Lots of time. His back foot slips. He gets the ball away, and he overfires everybody. Atkinson was over there trying to make the interception at the 40-yard line, but it is incomplete, and it is fourth down. Joe Namath was down on the baseball infield, who, as a matter of fact, on the pitching mound when he went to throw that ball, and his back foot slipped, and he overshot his mark. And now Curly Johnson is in. George Atkinson is not going to field this front. They're giving Roger Bird the opportunity as the deep man. He has very sure hands and very unlikely to fumble. That is why they use him many times. Low pass from center. Johnson gets away a wobbly kick against the wind, and Bird takes it at the 41. Loses the football, and it is kicked out of midair. opportunity to give the ball to Snell, who picks up maybe a yard or two, and not much more than that. Even Dave Grayson came up from the secondary to help out. And after that fumble, Roger Bird did not go back on the field. Now we have Howie Williams in there. Howie Williams, who has been playing number three, really, at that strong side safety position, uh, a good football player. So I'm pretty sure that Joe Namath will start working on him. It is second down and nine from the 39. Sauer and Maynard again on the right side. Atkinson, the rookie, gives way about uh, six or seven yards to Maynard on the right side. Lamons a split to the left. Maynard drops straight back. Now looking down the right side, Sauer turns out. He had started in with Willie Brown on him and turned out a little too late to get to the ball at the 10th. And it is third down and nine, and again, a big play, because with this win, Jim Turner is nearly out of field goal range. You know, it's, uh, it's interesting, though, to watch both of these teams. The defense of the Jets is getting, I'm sorry, of the Oakland Raiders is getting to Joe Namath a bit more. Uh, LaMonica has had a rather comfortable afternoon. Uh, the entire, both defenses, as we've been saying all day, have been superb. Offensive lines have been superb. And these, Jim, are not the easiest conditions. Throwing into or even with this win is not that easy. About 12 minutes to go, third quarter, 13 to 10. New York in this American Football League championship game. Big play. Namath on third down, dropping back lots of time. Fires the ball. Atkinson is there to knock the ball away from John Maynard. And it's fourth down. And a pretty good play by the rookie, cornerback, George Atkinson, forced into play, and he has learned the hard way this year when Kent McLuhan went out with a knee injury. Well, they're not even going to try a field goal attempt. That shows you how the wind is, because they'd be able to kick it from around the 46 or 7. Instead, Curly Johnson comes in, backs into his own territory, and will punt the ball from there. Now, the right side, Mike D'Amato lined up on the right side, jumped offside. And Oakland Raiders started a rush and then got back in time, and D'Amato moved. And so here is something that uh, we will see as they back up five yards. D'Amato was actually drawn up by the defense. Their opportunity also, they've been getting their kick return. They had a chance to get the kick return unit onto the field. And Atkinson is deep. They did not have the kick return unit on the field because they thought they might try a field goal. Johnson gets this kick away and is heading for the sideline. Got inside the five and down at the six-yard line by Rodemaker. And so, even though they have the wind at their back, Daldi Rogatis, the Oakland Raiders, as they say in football, are in the hole. They sure are. And that fumble by Roger Bird was awfully big because they had such great field position. Big Turner, as Jim called it, was right there on it. There's a timeout on the field and the score, New York 13, Oakland 10.
From the six-yard line, Oakland will put the ball in play on this crisp New York afternoon. Temperature all day has been about 35 to 36 degrees. But now that the sun is falling behind the closed end of Shea Stadium, the temperature will drop inside the stadium perceptibly. But the football game is a hot one, 13 to 10. The Raiders with the win at their back, but 94 yards away from a score. You know, Jim, the weather has just come up great because when you think of it just two days ago, an awful lot of snow fell here in New York, and then yesterday, an awful lot of wind and rain. The rain is gone, but the wind's still here. Charlie Smith has checked in. Banizak is out. Warren Wells to the left, Bolitnikoff to the right. In the backfield, and the Monarch is going to pass him his own end zone for Bolitnikoff and has him out across the 15, near the 16, and near a first down. Well, let me call, simply went down, stopped, turned back, leaped high in the air, and caught the football. And they're going to measure to see whether or not it's the first down. And, Jim, it's, while they're measuring, uh, it's obvious on the far side of that football field that uh, the New York Jets are going to give the short pass pattern to the left to Darrell LaMonica. Darrell has gone to that side, but one time, Beverly's playing him way off, way off of uh, Warren Wells. So the down and out could be very effective. Ball is just shy of the first down, inches away, and let us see whether or not LaMonica uses a down or two here in an effort to go for the long bomb or whether he'll simply try to pick up the first down and go on from there. In any event, Wells goes to the left, let me cross right on second down and inches to go. The ball is handed to Dixon, and Dixon tries to get that first down and might have gotten it before he is pushed back inside the 15-yard line. Darrell now signals first down for the Oakland Raiders. Ten minutes, or rather, check that, 11 minutes left to go in third quarter. The Jets out in front, 13 to 10. Maynard has caught a touchdown pass. Turner's kicked two field goals. For Oakland, Belitnikov has caught a touchdown pass, and Blanda has added a field goal. Wells now flanks left, Belitnikov right. Smith and Dixon, the setback. Cannon, the tight end on the left side. LaMonica back to throw. Throwing goes right again. Again to Belitnikov. Breaks away from two men across the 40. Gets a great block. Gets across the 50. Down to the 47-yard line. Goes Fred Belitnikov. And he simply steps out of two tackles. Bill Baird and Cornell Gordon. Bill Baird especially tried to go for the interception. The great block that Jim Simpson described was Warren Wells coming all the way across from the left side of the field, blocking on number 22. And Belitnikov, who's been murdered, has almost, I guess almost did it again, Jim. Ball down on the 46-yard line now of New York. And now they still have the wind at their backs. We keep mentioning it. It has seemed stronger now than before. Warren Wells goes to the left, and they're backing off, and they're going to get a new football. <laughs> Jim Otto didn't realize it. The other 10 men went back in a huddle, and Otto was standing over the football, ready to center it. Now he gets the word. Belitnikov comes out to the right again. Wells to the left. Billy Cannon on the left side. Charlie Smith, an explosive tight runner who was started but did not play much of the second quarters. And there he's coming out of the backfield. LaMonica back to throw. Warren Wells is back there. He's got it at the 10. Down to the six-yard line. First down and goal to goal. New York, or rather Oakland Raiders on the New York Jets six. Warren Wells circled between two defenders and caught a perfectly passed, thrown pass. Absolutely right, Jim. That was a beautiful pass because he'd been calling Beverly, covering Warren Wells deep. He got help to the inside, and Daryl LaMonica just laid it up, a fly pattern going toward the post. Well, the Raiders have not been out in front of this ball game yet. They now have an opportunity. Let the cop right. Wells left. Cannon, the tight end on the right side. Ball is handed to Charlie Smith inside the five, and Ralph Baker drags him down as he gets to about the three. When I say drags him down, he had him by the shoulders and threw him down. With help from Jim Hudson. And I'm sure New York wishes that the, the uh, Raiders keep that football on the ground because they want as much of this third quarter as possible to go by. They want the football, but they want it with the wind. That's one thing to keep in mind. In the fourth quarter, the Jets will have the wind at their backs. And that's the way the scoring, touchdown-wise at least, has gone. Lippincoff right, Wells left. The back to split, handed to Charlie Smith again. Same play, maybe a yard more, shy of the goal line. Clock continues to run. Eight and a half minutes to go, third quarter. Sun has nearly disappeared behind the stadium. And now, the Jets, you know, I don't want to accuse anybody of anything, but they're tangling up Charlie Smith as he tries to get up each time. The lot of clock to run. 
They sure want that. And once again, we're looking to that wide side of the football field, off to the left. They're going out there this time. You might look for a cross pattern. Third down and two. Politnikoff and Wells both slip and flank very wide to the left. The ball is handed to Dixon. Dixon gets down near the goal line and is thrown back. It is brought down. Now, we come to a monumental decision. It could turn out to be that, Aldi Regattas. Do you go for the touchdown on the seven points, or do you send on your field goal unit and try to tie it up? The championship game, and I got the feeling they'll go for the TD. But and, of course, with the win at the back, this may be their last opportunity. And also, Jim, it was an absolutely great tackle on that play by number 22, Jim Hudson. Well, the Monica is walking over, and I see two tight ends going out on the field. Jim Simpson, how do you got it? What does this mean to you? George Blanda, who can throw the football, but who is the field goal kicker, has gone on. La Monica will kneel at the nine-yard line as Oakland, with 7.29 left to go third quarter, is going for the tie. Angle from right to left. Ball is placed down. The kick is good. And for the first time today, we have a tie ball game. Time out on the field, and the score now, New York 13, and Oakland 13. This is the time of the year football fans love best, but this is also the roughest time on two friends of yours, your lift. And you can blame it on the wind, and the rain, and sleet, and snow, and all of that. Winter weather is bound to crack, dry, and chap your lips. That's why you need chapstick lip balm, and that's why you should protect your lips with chapstick. It has medicated lip soothing ingredients specifically designed to protect against chapping. And Chapstick has other moisturizers sold to soothe and help heal lips that are already chapped. No wonder the one and only Chapstick is the world's largest selling lip balm. Make it a point to pick up a supply of Chapstick lip balm in the familiar black and white soup, enough for the entire family. And don't take your lips anywhere without it. And here's another product from the market is a Chapstick lip balm that you shouldn't be without. Chap Ann's hand cream. Chap Ann soothes and helps you rough with hands in only three days. It really works. Jim Simpson, we might well look back at that field goal as the most important play of the entire football game because the only three points that have been scored in this third quarter with the win was a field goal. And if it winds up tied, we have sudden death. Our shot kicks off. Christie takes it deep in the end zone and quickly goes to one knee to come out to the 20. And now again, as Aldi Regattas has been telling you, the New York Jets will try to pick up the first down, maintain momentum, not necessarily to score. They'd love to do that. But to keep that clock running and get to the fourth quarter so that they've got the open end of Shea Stadium, the stadium through which the wind rushes at their back. Lyman's and Stoward come to the left. Maynard to the right. 13 to 13 to score. Third quarter. Namath hands the ball to Snell. Snell gets around the right side for a yard or two, and that is about all. Isaac Lasseter was over there to make the stop, along with Dan Birdwell. Second down and eight from the 22. That crowd, more than 63,000. And as we said, and we'll say it again, you haven't been able to buy a ticket to this one in a long, long while. Roger Bird, as we said, is in. He's up on the line of scrimmage now. Although he'll drop from there very quickly on second down eight as Namath pumps once, pumps twice, in the pocket, hands the ball off to Emerson Boozer. He comes around, and I want to tell you a play was made by Gus Otto that you wouldn't believe. He was being blocked by Matt Snell, rolled under the legs of Snell, and took down Boozer, who was coming around. And that was a great job of acting by Joe Namath. He got some tremendous blocking, a great block by Winston Hill, the left tackle, and as Jim Simpson described, one of the fine defensive plays of the entire afternoon, two men in front of him, Gus Otto gets to the runner. That was a loss of three, so it is third down and 11 from the 19, and now Namath and his Jets come up to a big play, and big play for the Raiders, who would love to contain them. 
Namath dropping straight back. They haven't used a double wing in this quarter. He throws, cruises by himself, and steps out of bounds, I believe, across the 30, which will be enough for the first down. They are putting the ball down on the sideline. First down for the New York Jets. Again, both quarterbacks are really ready for this football game. Jim, nothing has left a chance. They're going uh, with just about, going against, rather, just about every weakness that they see. The only weaknesses, really, that, that have been visible, at least, are the weaknesses that we find a back being covered by a linebacker. Maynard right. So is Sauer. Lyman's left. Boozer and Snell to set back on first down. Five minutes, 52 seconds to go. Snell with the football. Comes across the left side. Finds daylight and picks up another first down, possibly, as he rolls to the 40-yard line before Roger Bird and Dan Connors made the tackle. Just about a half a yard shy of a first down. Second down and short yard. And it's always interesting to watch that off back. And uh, uh, we've been seeing some outstanding blocking. Uh, Emerson Boozer, number 32, led up in there, put a fine block on Gus Otto. Now let us see how Namath plays on this same situation. Second and inches. Monica went for the first down, handing it to Dixon, and Namath gives it to Snell. And Snell is up close to the first down. Dan Birdwell is on the bottom of the pile along with Roger Bird and Gus Otto. And the officials again taking a long hard look to see whether or not it is a first down. They're not going to measure and apparently it is an inch or so away. A big play coming up Jim because now they get the first down. There's four minutes and about 45 to go. It'll just about run out the clock for the third quarter. 13-13 the score. The team that has had the wind at its back has scored in every instance but one. Snell carrying the football, has the first down, gets across the 45 out to the 47-yard line. And credit that one again, Jim Simpson, to number 32, Emerson Boozer. What a tremendous block he put on Gus Otto. That boy hit in there like a 275-pound offensive tackle. This is the American Football League Championship game from New York. The right to win the league championship. The right to represent the American Football League in the Super Bowl against the National Football League. Baltimore and Cleveland, no score second quarter in the National Football League Championship. Now Maynard and Sauer both to the right, but the ball is handed to Snell. Gus Otto makes the tackle, but Snell rolls inside the 50 down to the 49-yard line of the Oakland Raiders. And the Jets are moving against the wind in this tie ball game. Three minutes, 44 seconds left to go, third quarter. Second down, and six. Maynard drops out to the right, Sauer will flank over that way, and Lamon splits five yards to the left. Boozer and Snell the setback. Maynard with a long count. Now a jump pass. Over the center to Sauer, down to the 41-yard line, and a first down. Namath went up in the air, shades of Harry Gilman. What a last quarter this is going to be, because Joe is awfully hot. Lamonic is playing an exceptionally fine football. There's, a, there's a Joe Namath establishing the run, Jim. When he's got those linebackers forcing, he comes with the slant. Beautiful, uh, beautiful quarterback. From the 41 now, Maynard is sent to the right again with Sauer. They've been in that same situation strong right on this series of downs. Lamons is split to the left about five yards. There's down from the 41 of Oakland. Namath takes the hand off the snow, drops back to the 50, fires down long intended for Lamons. It is intercepted almost, and then it is out of bounds. Let me show you what happened. Dave Grayson, who has caught 10 on the year, had that ball intercepted, but couldn't contain it. He got out of bounds with it. The ball popped over his head and was popped down by Roger Bird. But he actually fumbled it from out of bounds back in the playing field area when Roger Bird, the second man, Lamons is the fellow who was supposed to catch it, and he never got his hands on it. What a big play for the New York Jets. It was almost a great play by in the double covering situation by Dave Grayson. 13-13, second down 10 from the Oakland 41. Maynard yelling something out now to Sauer, who again is flank right, it's strong right. 
Namath hands the ball and almost collides with Emerson Boozer. And Boozer is thrown down by Carlton Oates and Ben Davidson. Third down and nine after a game of the yard. And the uh, Oakland Raiders are playing the New York Jets strictly for the run because they're really jamming. They've got a three-man deep coverage with Grayson in the middle, Atkinson on the right side, and Willie Brown on the left side, rather, Atkinson, and Willie Brown, number 24, on the right. They're both going now off to the left. Two minutes and five seconds left in the third quarter, and Oakland will have to go against the win, and New York with the win. Same set as before. Third down and nine. Namath dropping straight back under a pass rush. Fires for Sauer. Over the mid got Namath. First down to the 21. George Atkinson was the man on him. And John Maynard is the man who caught it at the 21. There you saw a play that worked so well for Bolitnikov earlier. You had 83 George Sauer to the right side. You had John Maynard to the right side. They were being covered by Willie Brown, 24, and George Atkinson. Number 83 goes downfield, George Sauer takes it to the outside. Don Maynard goes downfield, takes it to the inside. My ball game, but the Jets are moving. Now first down from the 21. Again, strong right, only this time the setback to split more. Namath drops straight back to throw. In the crowd, he's got a man out there and overthrows Maynard. Maynard was at least five to six steps behind Atkinson when the ball was thrown. Atkinson has great speed and can actually catch up to a football. But had the ball not been overthrown, Maynard would have had a score. Now, Joe Namath finds himself in an interesting position because he's got one minute and nine seconds to go. He's in a field goal kicking position. He's been throwing the football. He could decide to keep it on the ground and try to get the wind to his back for the field goal. He may also decide, since they're covering deep, Jim, on Maynard. Sauer and even Lamont to take his back out of the backfield as he did earlier, circle him and try to hit the back. Maynard and Sauer again, strong right, Lamont to the left. This is second down 10 from the Oakland 21 in a tie ball game, third quarter. A lot of folks up front for Oakland. Maynard drops back short yardage, fires. There's a fine play by Atkinson, intended for Maynard and knocked down by a one handed stab by George Atkinson. One minute, five seconds to go in the third quarter. Well, you will not read in the paper tomorrow about the win. But believe me, those who have played it and those who have watched it here today know that the win has a great deal to do with all of the strategy and all of the scoring, really. I you know a big man right now could be number 56, Ralph Oliver, because Ralph is to the wide side of that field. It is wide open for that little swing pass to Matt Snell. And, of course, Bill Mathis, the fine receiver, is now in as a replacement for Boozer. Now, this is third down 10, almost a mark. The fake to Mathis, the throw, and then it's alignment to the 10 to 5. Touchdown! Jim, what a great, great call by Joe Namath. Joe has been dropping back a couple of times now. He has rolled out. Roger Bird try to go for the football. Lavins again got perfect position between he and number 21, Roger Bird, and he goes in for the touchdown. A very big play. The first touchdown this afternoon against the win. 58 seconds left in the third quarter. Jim Turner has come in. Dave Pooley will hold at the 10. Lamons, the touchdown maker, the tight end, and Turner's kick is perfect. And there's time out on the field with the score now, the New York Jets 20, the Oakland Raiders 13. This is Joe Garagio. Have you heard the word? It's White Hat special time again at the Dodge Boys. This great money-saving event has proved so popular in the past few years that the Dodge Boys are offering it again, right now. It works as simply as this. First, the Dodge Boys take a big, roomy Polara, two- or four-door hardtop. Then they add the features most people want. Then, you guessed it, they cut the price. Some of the many Whitehead special items at a low package price are a vinyl roof in black, white, tan, or green, front and rear bumper guards, fender-mounted turn signals. Outside, remote-controlled rear-view mirrors white wall tires, and more. 
So if you want to save on a big new 1969 Dodge Polaris or any of the other White Hat specials, hurry on down to your nearby Dodge Boys. See for yourself why we say Dodge is turning up the fever this year. Jim Simpson with Aldi Regattas from a now darkened Shea Stadium, although the spirits of the New York Jet fans are bright. With 58 seconds, their team leads 20 to 13 here in the third quarter. Billy Johnson will kick off against the wind. George Atkinson takes it up to five. A lot of speed, the 10, the 20, the 25, almost knocked out of the hits to the 27 and gets all the way out to the 30. It'll be first and 10. Two Michaels of Baltimore kicked the 28-yard field goal, and in the second quarter of the National Football League Championship, the Colts lead the Browns by the score of 3 to nothing on the lakefront in Cleveland. They might have it colder than we do, you know? You know, Jim, that big drive, again, uh, significant. They ate up about six, six minutes in that total drive. Now let us see if LaMonica goes deep for the bomb, realizing he's got 35 seconds of wind left. The fake, dropping straight back. He's going for a bomb. Downfield intended for Warren Wells. And back there is Randy Beverly, almost intercepting it, saying that he did and saying that Warren Wells interfered with it. But it is just allowed 26 seconds to go. LaMonica was going for the bomb, Nero, with the win. He sure was, and I guess the, there was a lot of wisdom to it, but Beverly was there playing the bomb. Jim Hudson was there helping him out. Probably the play that would be more significant for him is to forget about the bomb because the Jets are going to be looking for that. Go short to the wide side of the football field. So Larry Grantham uh, could be important here. The Jets back to Dixon and Smith. Well, that's McCoff is to the right. Wells to the left. 20 to 13. The New York Jets. 26 seconds to go. Third quarter. LaMonica dropping straight back on second down. This one is to his tight end. Billy Cannon coming out of the backfield. He gets out to the 36 and is hurled out of bounds by Jim Hudson, the strong side safety from the University of Texas. It'll be third down and four. But the clock is running. And in a moment, the Raiders are going to have to trudge to the other end of the field. And the wind conditions, at least, will be in the favor of the Jets who managed to touch down against the wind. Three seconds, two seconds. Now they'll try to get it off, but they're not going to do it. There's the gun. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. New York 20, Oakland 13. The red bell light of Robin Hood The dream of dreams Cinderella could To share the magic of Hollywood To the movies we go And it's off to the movies we go As Monitor takes a look at the new and current crop of Hollywood goodies Unless you think we're whistling down an empty sound pad Monitor has his very own motion picture critic He's Gene Shalit a reviewer of considerable note and author of several widely read newspaper and magazine columns about the performing arts. This is Hate Morgan, who also has impeccable taste, inviting you to join us this weekend on Monitor. to Shea Stadium for the final quarter of this American Football League Championship, the New York Jets. But Oakland, moving against them on third down and five, have installed Johnny Sample back at the left corner spot. They'll be against Fred Bolitnikoff on the big down, going against the win now for the Oakland Raiders. Monica back to throw, and he is going right for Bolitnikoff at a drop down by Al Atkinson, the linebacker who dropped into that zone to help Sample out as Bolitnikoff was going down and cutting across the middle. It's a good move. I'm not sure whether Cornell Gordon was hurt or not, but bringing Sample back in, uh, John may not have the speed that he once had, but against this wind, Jim, they're not going to be throwing deep as easily as they were obviously throwing with the wind. Earl Christie and Bill Barrett go deep. I shy, forced upon against the wind. Nobody's been successful doing that. I... And the wind hold is up a little bit, but not much, and it gets a great Oakland bounce, comes down inside the 10, down to the 5, down to the 4, and is stopped there. And the New York Jets are backed up to their own four-yard line. 14 minutes, 42 seconds left in this championship game at Chase Stadium. 
The American Football League, this is the first time that the New York Jets have made it to the championship game, and the second time the Oakland Raiders have made it. And the Oakland Raiders, Jim, defensively, they've been called on so many times this year to keep the Raiders in it, have, are being called on right now. They just about must stop the Jets right here. First down from the four-yard line of New York. Namath calling signals. He's got a strong left situation. Hands the ball to Boozer. He gets across the five, across the ten. Has him out of trouble as he gets to the 15-yard line. He picks up 11 yards on the first truck out of the box. And it's first down New York. Emerson Boozer is well. There's no doubt about that, Jim. Number 32 is blocking like a tiger and running like the championship depends on it. First and ten from the 15. And now, Jake Turner has come in. Maynard goes to the right. George Sauer is the man who is out. Ball is handed off again to Boozer. This time, he hardly gets back to the line of scrimmage. Ralph Oliver made the stop. Now Turner goes out, and Sauer comes back in. Howie Williams is now in the secondary. Roger Bird has gone back out again. Roger was hurt in the first half and fumbled the football away on his own 40 in the second half and hasn't played much since. And fumbled Jim was an awfully big play also. We'll recall he gave the Jets the football in midfield, and when they had the punt again, he gave it to the Raiders way down deep. 20 to 13, New York, 13 minutes, 10 seconds to go in the ball game. This is second down 10 as David drops back to throw. Fires the football. The Lamon who falls down at the 25-yard line, not holding on to the football, defended against by Howie Williams. But there are some across this side of the field that thought that Pete might have caught it, but he did not. Third down and 10. And Joe is going to his back, but very infrequently. He has not been going. Now, Boozer is going out number 32. Uh, Bill Mathis, 31, is back in there. Draw on third down 10. We will see what happens. Oakland trails by seven. Or, if you're a Jet fan, the Jets lead by seven. Third down 10 from the 15-yard line. Name it, dropping back to throw again. Fires to Snell, his back is across the 25 and out near the 30-yard line, first down. Ralph Oliver ran him out of bounds, but Joe Namath brings him out of trouble on third down 10. He's called an absolutely brilliant football game, and based on this afternoon, and I'm sure the entire season, Joe Namath very much deserves the award of the most valuable player. 20 to 13 the score for the right to go on to the Super Bowl. Baltimore with a 28-yard field goal by Lou Michaels leads Cleveland in the second quarter of the NFL championship, 3-0. Strong side left, Sauer and Maynard both to the left. Boozer has come back in with Matt Snell, who's had a good day today. First down from the 30-yard line. Maynard takes a step back and fires to Sauer. Sauer's wrestled down on a tough tackle by Willie Brown, the right cornerback. And he picks up only... Well, let's see. They're going to mark it at the 34, gain of four, but he must have been thrown back four yards and down a couple of feet. And Joe Namath has stayed short most of the afternoon. His running game against the wind has been great. His passing game both ways has been outstanding. He really hasn't tried, Jim, to go up top. I mean way up top too frequently. 20 to 13, the Jets are on top. The crowd, more than 63,000 here at Shea Stadium in New York. The ball is handed to Snell over the left side. And that is big Ben Davidson, who's on top of him. But also coming up quickly was Howie Williams from his safety position to make the tackle. The ball is put down on the 36, and we come to another third down situation to you, only this time it's third and four. And in the last third down and long situation, he went to Matt Snell. However, now he's got a situation where he might put Sauer and Maynard out to one side. They're coming here. You might look for a cross pattern. They hit it earlier with Maynard over the middle. Maynard is split right. Sauer is flanked right. And Namath is back to throw on third down four. Fires the ball out of bounds intended for Lamon at the 46-yard line. It's fourth down. And leading 20 to 13, the Jets will have to kick the ball away to the Raiders. who will be moving against the wind, but they'll have the football and the opportunity. George Atkinson and Charlie Smith go deep. Now, Curly Johnson, who's been averaging nearly 44 yards a kick throughout the season, should be able to get away a boomer in this situation. In that, he's got a strong, strong wind at his back. 
They're only playing him about 40 yards deep. That may not be enough. He fumbles the low pass from center, but gets the kick away. Charlie Smith calls for a fair catch at the 29-yard line, takes it right there, and that's where they'll put it in play first and ten. There's time out on the field with the score. The Jets, 20. The Raiders, 13. That time of year again, time to ring out the old and ring in the new to keep up the kindness in all lang syne. This is Gene Rayburn, and I am hereby and herewith inviting all of you out there to the most swinging New Year's Eve party ever with Lionel Hampton, Harry James, the Kirby Stone Double Quartet, the Christy Minstrels, the Glenn Miller Orchestra, and lots more. And just to make it a really, really, really big show, they're all coming to you live. And the Piet de Resistance, naturally at midnight, we switch to Times Square, where Ben Brower, who must have invented New Year's Eve, broadcasts his 26th Times Square celebration. To make it a spectacular New Year's Eve, join the 1969 All-Star Parade of Bands live, right here on NBC Radio. Woo! Regardless, Jim Simpson, K State of New York, first down the Raiders on their own 29. They trail 20 to 13, 11 and a half minutes to go. Lamonic is back to pass. A screen pass to Dixon, who nearly falls down, regains his footing. Elliott catches him from behind as he gets across the 30 and out to the 33. Very nearly a loss on the play. It's been an awfully big play for Lamonica. Uh, he's used it several times. Dixon either swinging or screening. Uh, they've been watching Ralph Oliver, 51, especially. Ralph is dropping off, looking for an inside uh, passing move as a defender. Uh, Ralph is moving off again. An American Football League record, 62,627 here today for this championship. LaMonica back on second down to throw. He's going deep against the wind. Belitnikoff is out there. He's got it! Across the 10-yard line, down to about the 9. They'll bring it back and mark it where they say his knee hit on the 11 as he slid to the 9. And he was on Johnny Sample. Now, Aldi Regattas said that moving Sample in with the wind, maybe LaMonica would not go deep. They were wrong. They sure were. That was a tremendous toss against the wind, showing you what a powerful man this Darrell LaMonica is. And you know, there is that tendency, uh, there is that tendency, Jim, to play him too tight. Uh, everyone seems to uh, take chances on number 25, but you just can't do it. 20 to 13, the score. New York, but Oakland has the ball on the 11 and a half yard line. LaMonica sets a strong left. Hands the ball instead to Charlie Smith trying to sweep right, and Smith just does get back to the line of scrimmage. Ralph Baker, the left side linebacker, tripped him up. Nine minutes, 54 seconds to go. Baltimore now leads Cleveland 10 to nothing in the National Football League Championship in the second quarter. Timeouts left, Oakland has two, New York three. If they are tied, there will be sudden death in this ball game. And if Oakland should score with nine and a half minutes to go, do they go for the two points or go for the tie? Figuring there's lots of time left. Blitnikoff right, Wells left. This is second down and 10, LaMonica dropping straight back. Going to Wells. Wells almost made a tremendous catch of the goal line. He was belted by Randy Beverly just as the football got there. So credit Wells, but credit Randy Beverly for a fine defensive play. And now the way Randy Beverly was playing Warren Wells, and he did, as Jim said, a great job. You might see a situation where they come right back, take that outside move, and then take Warren Wells to the goal post. Well, whatever it is, it has been brought in from the bench, meaning the play, but the Charlie Smith has come out, and Pete Banaszak has gone in. Now, Wells is coming to the same side, and Bolitnikoff is going to the right side. Billy Cannon, the tight end, comes over to this left side. Same side as Warren Wells. Keep in mind what Duo told you. And now, Lamonic is back to throw. Loops it for Hewitt Dixon. And it is knocked away. He was triple teamed by Jim Hudson. Hudson kicks the football off the body of Al Atkinson, his teammate, but he was so disgusted because he thought that he might have intercepted the ball. Now it is fourth down, and George Brandis trotting in. 
And what a great play number 22 made. And really the difference probably, Jim, in that uh, game where Oakham won at Oakham was the fact that number 22, Jim Hudson, was evicted from the football game. But he's made some brilliant plays. From the 20, with LaMonica holding, and he can throw the football if he wishes, but it looks like Flander will try the field goal. From the 20, the ball is spotted, and the ball is up, and it is a 20-yard field goal, and the New York Jets now lead by four points. As there's time out on the field with the score now, New York 20, Oakland 16. Monitor on NBC Radio. Monitor is people. I have a face which in close-ups can sometimes look as like the other side of the moon, hence the craters here and there. And you take the job of attorney general. He's probably going to wind up going to some lawyer. Smoking is really dumb. Well, look at you. All you're doing is just fucking in the smoke and blowing it out. Then you're fucking it in and blowing it out. And you may make a circle now and then. But what else have you got? You know, like, it, it would really be cool if you'd suck it in and keep it at home, you know? where you meet fascinating people every weekend on NBC Radio. Nine minutes, 15 seconds to go. Ishide is standing at the 40, waiting for the official to bring in the football to kick off. And in the meantime, the New York Jets are a little leery. Since Oakland is going against the wind now, they feel that perhaps they will try an onside kick, even though there are nine minutes and 15 seconds to go. They're guarding against it, and Ishide is not going to do it. He kicks it rather deep, and that is Christie at the one. To the five, the ten, the fifteen, across the twenty to the sidelines, and then run out of bounds as he gets to the twenty-two yard line. And as the New York Jets start on the field and the Oakland defensive unit, we pause ten seconds for station identification. Simpson, Audi Regatta, Shea Stadium on a rather pleasant New York December afternoon in that the temperature is in the middle 30s. For those who are down on that strong wind, they might not agree with me as to being pleasant. Eight minutes, 35 seconds to go. First down 10 from the 22. Name it, drops straight back. New York leading by four. Name it, fires. Intended for Grayson to pick up by Atkinson down the sideline. Across the 10, the 5 knocks out of bounds as he gets down to the 5-yard line. And the rookie, George Atkinson, the man they figured to beat, has turned the football game around. That's for sure, and it was kind of surprising. You thought maybe Joe might have stayed on the ground, but it was Joe Namath, Joe Namath, who made that big block, knocking Atkinson out of bounds. Now from the 5. Maynard, in their last game, caught passes Kennedy for more than 200 yards. In this game, he's caught a pass on Atkinson back in the first half. But here, Atkinson has turned the football game around. Oakland has never been in front. There's a fire down below us on the Oakland bench. Smoke is billowing everywhere. They're putting it out. The ball is carried by Banazak. Touchdown! Banazak goes the five-yard line. Right over Ralph Baker, the left side linebacker, and into the end zone. And now for the first time today, Oakland is in front. And Jim, we've been saying time after time, this season, the great defense of the Oakland Raiders has been called on to stop the, the opposition. They did it again. Not only did they do it, they took it back and, and set up the, the last score. Land is in to add the extra point. LaMonica to hold. LaMonica holds. Land the kick. And as we said, the Oakland Raiders go in front for the first time today. The fire has been put out on the Oakland bench. But I guarantee you, the Raiders weren't concerned about the fire. They simply love the fact they've got the touchdown. And am I there, goes to 23. I was about to say, am I wrong, Al Regatta? So I thought the score was 23 to 20, Oakland, but the scoreboard shows 22. It is 23 to 20, Oakland. Remember, though, that we have 8 minutes and 18 seconds left. 
plus the fact that the New York Jets are going with the wind. And Jim, we've been talking all afternoon about the wind. We've been talking about uh, this Oakland Raiders team, and they certainly deserve tremendous credit. High shot kicks off. Again, a deep kick against the wind, driving Christie into the end zone. He's going to bring it out. He's across the 10, the 15, up the sideline, across the 30, and a fine run back simply coming up the right side of the field, across the 30 to the 32. I'm taking a look at LaMonica's pass, Aldi Regalis, and the two kickoffs lately of Ishard. I'm beginning to wonder, has the wind died down somewhat on the field? Looking up with that flag at the top of the post there, Jim, it doesn't seem to be blowing too briskly right now. Well, Namath and his Jets try to come back. Lamons comes to the right side, split five yards. Maynard and Sauer are to the left in the strong left set formation. Snell and Boozer are the setbacks. 23 to 20, Oakland leading for the first time. From the 31, Namath dropping straight back. Firing, he's got Sauer out there, and Brown runs him out of bounds, but not until he crosses the 40 to the 42-yard line and very near a first down. The lineman is asking the man to march across the field, and they'll have to take the chains all the way across to see whether or not it is a first down. And then I guess the Raiders did not figure that Joe Namath, after being intercepted for that side, would come right back, but he sure did. Linesman takes the stakes across the field, almost ran down Joe Namath in the process, as Namath takes this break, not only to go over and see whether or not it's a first down, which it is, but also to hear if we view back his coach has anything to say, which he does not. So Namath comes back. That touchdown of Baltimore culminated a 60-yard drive in 10 plays, Tom Maddy scoring from one yard out as the Colts lead the Browns 10 to nothing in the second quarter in the National Football League Championship. This is the American Football League Championship, 23-20, a thriller, Oakland leads New York. Eight minutes, three seconds to go. Maynard right, Star flanked right, Lamons on the left, name it back to throw. Name it with lots of time, going with the win for Maynard, and he's got it! Situation because they did not score from there except for a field goal. Here 
goes in and up to left corner back. Kalipnikov has been able to move on him today. First down, they come to Monica back, looking. Billy Cannon tight end by himself, and Cannon is successful with himself as he stepped out of bounds across the 46. Beverly was five yards away. Cannon could have run more, but his momentum simply carried him out of bounds. Given off a lot of credit again to Daryl LaMonica and the entire Oakland Raiders team. They've never quit. They've been hanging in here, and there's an awful lot of time to go. Well, I'm sure there was a couple of minutes to go. Everybody remembers that Oakland was down and came back to win out in Oakland. Draw play to Dixon, lots of room up the middle, across the 45 to 40, still on his feet across the 30, right down as he hits to the 26-yard line. Now the New York Jets allowed Oakland to have the lead for 31 seconds, and it looks like Oakland is going to return the favor. And we were saying what a brilliant game that uh, Joe Namath has called, and what a really brilliant game also being called by Daryl LaMonica. He puts the football up in the air, he gets you thinking he's in a throw. You come with an outside 4-3 rush, and he comes back with a draw. Bernicoff and Wells go to the right from the 26-yard line. Six minutes, 40 seconds to go. 27-23 New York. First down, LaMonica. Strong side right. Loves to throw to his right. That last time, he threw twice to Cannon. To the left. Dixon running to the left, and they're blitzing. And Dixon gets away from the blitzing linebacker. Oh, that that was not the linebacker. That was simply Verlin Biggs, the right defensive end who crashed in. Dixon eluded his grasp. It would have been a five-yard loss. Instead, he gets back to the line of scrimmage. And maybe a yard more. Second down and nine. Fine play by Biggs, only to have Dixon fly right out of his arm. Let's keep in mind also that LaMonica, one of his very big plays, has been coming out of that backfield with one of his backs circling to the wide side. Second down and nearly ten. Strong side right. Wells is flanked. LaMonica's back to throw, looking to his right. Throwing to his right to Warren Wells in the end zone and out of the end zone. Double covered by Billy Baird and Johnny Sample in the deep far right-hand corner of the end zone. The ball was overthrown, and now LaMonica comes up with quite a situation. If they have to settle for the field goal, it will be a difficult one because they're kicking into the wind. Again, Jim, we've got to point out the tremendous job that this uh, Oakland Raider offensive line has done. Otto uh, has been superb. Upshaw, Hawkins, uh, I mean, Jim Harvey, rather, Harry Shue, and Bob Sweet. They've been really protecting him. He has not been hit. Only one man has been thrown, and that was Namath back in the first half. Now, third down and about 10 from the 26. Dixon starts in motion. First time we've seen that today. To the right. The monarchy is back. Passing for Belitnikov. Almost intercepted. The ball is loose. Back there was Johnny Sample. He cut down the sidelines and in. Again, double coverage on Belitnikov. And Sample almost picked it off. Now, Banizek is coming in. Otto is there. It is fourth down and 10 from the 26. It has to try a field goal of more than 30 yards. And they're down by four points, 27 to 23. Five minutes, 54 seconds to go. Warren Wells looks at the bench. Johnny Rouse simply stands there, hands behind his back. The Oakland coach telling them to go for it on fourth down and 10. Politnikoff to the right, Wells to the left. The entire Shea Stadium, 62,647, get up. They want the Jets to stop the Raiders. The backfield is split. Canada's on the left side. LaMonica Gobo's back to pass. He's knocked down by Biggs. At the 35, and the Jets take over. Once again, Jim, it's so easy to sit up in a comfortable boost and second guess, but when the Jets, I'm sorry, when the Oakland Raiders went for that field goal, they, they kind of thought they would not, and they, they thought they would go for the score. Now when they go for the pass, going for the score, we had the feeling that they would have gone for the field goal. They would have been only for an outside fake of Berlin Biggs who simply cut inside him and had a clear shot at LaMonica and the first time LaMonica's been thrown today is the big play. Name it back, hands the ball to Boozer. Boozer breaks into the clear as he hits to the 40. Up to the 43-yard line with Ralph Oliver riding him down. The clock shows five minutes and 15 seconds to go. 27-23, New York. Now the uh, shouldering the load will probably be Max Bell and Emerson Boozer because Joe Namath Time is the big factor. Five minutes and 13 seconds as they're measuring for the, uh, for the first time. 
First down for New York. The Jets, 5.13 to go, four-point lead. The ball on their own 42-yard line and have a first down. And, of course, Aldi Rogato and I televised games in which Buffalo had Oakland, in which Denver had Oakland, in which San Diego had Oakland, and Oakland won all three. The Raiders have won nine in a row. And with 4.55 to go now, they're not out of it. Sauer left, Maynard right. The Jets try to control the football. Ball is handed to Snell. Snell picks up a couple of tough yards out to the 44-yard line, and that is all. Tackle is made by Isaac Lasseter. you got to figure, Jim, every first down is going to consume about two full minutes. So with 4.30 about to go, uh, the running game is the big thing now. Exactly four and a half minutes to go, but as everybody that follows football knows, a lot can happen in two minutes. Shower to the left, Maynard to the right again. Second down, an eight from the 44. Draw play to Snell, straight ahead. He picked up a couple of yards. Isaac Lasseter is the man who made the stop, along with big Carlton Oak. on the 46, and again, out here we got us, a big third down play. Third and about six. It sure is, in three minutes and 40 seconds to go, does Joe Namath go to the air? They're going to be jamming off his tight. Does he want to put it up and risk the interception of the incompletion and stopping the clock or turning the ball over to Oakland, or will he stick to the ground? Boozer, he's going to put it up. Namath ever the gambler, standing in the pocket, throwing deep for Maynard and overthrows him. And it's fourth down. The ball, ball falls incomplete at the 20. And now, with 327, the Jets will have to give up the football to Oakland. The Raiders get another chance. But remember, they've got to have a touchdown to go ahead or at least two field goals. Now let's think back, Jim, to that field goal that the Oakland Raiders did not go for. Had they gone for it, 27-26, it uh, could have been a different uh, situation. Johnson standing back on his 31-yard line. George Atkinson deep. He's got a lot of speed. Johnson gets the ball high in the air. Atkinson comes out and takes it at the 15-yard line and falls forward to the 16 on the fair catch. So Mark is just over the 15. And now about 85 yards away. The Oakland Raiders from their second consecutive American Football League championship. And turn it around the other way. The New York Jets in their first title game are leading by four with three minutes, 15 seconds to go. And the Raiders know how important this is, Jim, because this is probably the last time they're going to have their hands on the football. Wells comes to the left, Blitnikoff to the right. Johnny Sample is the cornerback over there, giving Blitnikoff about five yards off the line of scrimmage. Lamonica is back. He's going to his right. Has his man, Blitnikoff, who steps by Sample and gets out to the 39-yard line, where it is a first down. That's the second time the number 46, Bill Baird, uh, from the weak side safety position, double covering, tried to go for the pass, and again, he got by him, and another fine catch by this great flanker back, Fred Blitnikoff. Two minutes, 35 seconds to go. Wells and Blitnikoff come out to the right side now, left side rather, strong left, LaMonica on first down, dropping back under a pass rush, gets the ball away for Warren Wells, who's playing the ball and has it. Billy Baird was playing the man, a five goes down as the man jumps on top of him, Jim Hudson, it'll be 15 more yards. Hudson holds his head, not only do they have the ball at the 15, but they'll step off 15 big yards. As Hudson pounced on Warren Wells in a sense of frustration. It was, a, it was kind of an amazing play all the way around because he was hit awfully hard, hard by Vernon Biggs. He laid the football up there, and the only man really that was close to it was Warren Wells. I said 15 yards, but since, of course, it was less than 30 yards away, they stepped off half the distance to the goal line, down to the 12 and a half yard line. But it is first down, two minutes, 20 seconds to go. Well, it's the top, and Wells go to the right. Oakland does not give up. New York does not give up. This has been part of championship football game. LaMonica calling signals. Looking to his right. Now passing behind Charlie Smith. They are saying that it is a lateral. And down the field goes the linebacker. Not picture, but it will be marked. Back at the 30-yard line. And instead of an Oakland score, 
by throwing the ball the way he did. The Monarchs were behind Smith. It became a lateral, not a forward pass. It's New York football. And the Monica knew it all the way because he started downfield. He knew what he had done. The football now goes over to the New York Jets. Two minutes and eight seconds to go. Well, there have been a lot of things that have happened. Clock is running. Baltimore now leads Cleveland 17 to nothing. What appears to be a runaway in the National Football League. This is a runaway. When they march down the Roberto D. Vicenzo, wrong card in the Masters, and Bob Goldie went on to win. And they march down the Kentucky Derby of this year, three plays in the Rams game. They'll talk about the fact that Lamonica threw a pass to what behind the man who was labeled to be a lateral. There's time out on the field with a score. New York 27, Oakland 23. Now. the name of the show. This is Roscoe. Now is the sound of today and tomorrow. Jimmy West, composer of MacArthur Park, By the Time I Get to Phoenix, and Up, Up, and Away. Jimmy Webb is now. Shea State in New York, two minutes left in this American Football League championship game. What a game it is. Namath hands off to Boozer, across the 30 and out near the 35-yard line before he's knocked down there. Tom Matty carried 12 yards for the second Baltimore score. That's two that Matty has scored. And it is 17-0 Baltimore over Cleveland, second quarter. And now Oakland uses up one of its timeouts to stop the clock with 1.53 to go. They had to figure they would. They have two timeouts left. Another one is now gone. One fifty-three to go. The defense, and you can be sure, Jim, that football is going to be staying on the ground. If they keep beat, if the Oakland Raiders do not call a timeout, Joe Namath will be coming with very long counts, consuming most of the time. Um, it's a thriller. John Maynard blowing on his hands, comes to the right. George Starr goes out to the left. Second down and six. Crowd gets quiet for the moment. The ball is handed to Bill Mathis, who is going nowhere. He's still on his feet and is pushed back behind the line of scrimmage. Clock shows 145. Oakland's only got one timeout left. And now they have called for time again. With Aldi Regattas, Jim Simpson. From Shea Stadium, 1 minute 45 seconds to go, 27-23, New York. The ball is on the 36th of the Jets. It is third down and four, and if ever, the Oakland Raiders needed to stop a team, this is the time. And if ever the Jets needed a first down, this is the time. Oakland has no timeouts left. That was a matter of consultation on the field that has delayed the game. Well, once Oakland gets the ball, if it gets the ball, it must stop the clock with down and out passes, incomplete passes to the sideline. But they may not get the football, and if not, they can't stop the clock, and Namath can simply run it out. That's how big the third down four play is. Namath calls signals, Maynard right, Star left, hands the ball to Boozer, who drops it and falls on it at the 32. And so it's fourth down, they lost yardage on the play, clock is running, 135. You can bet your life that the Jets won't dash onto the field. They kick the ball away. 1.30, clock running. Charlie Smith goes back. Jets taking all the time in the world for this punt. Probably about a minute left to go when they get the punt, and Curly Johnson is going to be kicking with the win. The Jets are standing around. They don't mind the five yards, I don't think, for a delay of game. It has been more than 25 seconds since their last play. are going to step in, stopping the clock, which it will, with a minute and one second to go as the Jets let it run. 
and Jim, the kick return unit is on the field. You're going to see some awfully fine blocking. We're going to probably see a punt return trying to go back to the wide side of the football field. The defensive line that suddenly will turn into the offense when the ball is punted will try to form a wall for George Atkinson, who's deep. And Atkinson has returned two punts for touchdowns this year. Billy Johnson back. Black won't start again until the ball is snapped. It's snapped, low pass from center. Johnson booms the ball away. Atkinson comes back, watches it hit, hits off him, picks up at the 15-yard line, comes up the right side, looks for the wall, can't find it, gets across the 20, and he's wrestled down at the 22. 47 seconds to go. New York, 27. Oakland, 23. John Dockery made the tackle. Baltimore leading Cleveland 17 to nothing. At this moment... It looks like Baltimore and New York in the Super Bowl. LaMonica back to pass. Don't count open off. LaMonica with time. Throws to Canada's tight end. is stepped out of bounds. Across the 35-yard line to the 38. Stops the clock with 38 seconds to go on the 38-yard line of Oakland. And the score, 27 to 23. Well, I tell you, 62,647 at all time American Football League championship crowd. And may I add, they are getting their money's worth. An all-time great American championship football game. Remember, Oakland pulled it out before the Jets out in Oakland. The Monica goes back to pass on first down. Passes behind Dixon. The ball goes out of bounds. For those of you who stopped the clock for 34 seconds, may not have understood the call. I think we did describe it clearly for you. When Bell LaMonica passed to his man, he had not crossed the line of scrimmage. He was in the backfield, and his forward pass was actually thrown behind the man toward their own goal line, which made it lateral, and it was picked up by Rob Baker. Roger Hagberg has come in at fullback, possibly, and I'm sure for blocking purposes. But now they put Warren Wells and Bolitnikoff to the same side. Second down 10, 34 seconds to go. LaMonica back to throw. Looking, firing for Warren Wells, who can't get to it at the 49-yard line. Overthrown, 30 seconds to go, third down 10. And I'm sure all the Oakland Raiders fans remember the great play that was made by number 23, Charlie Smith. On the last play, Charlie came out of that backfield to the left side, and he was covered by Larry Grantham, so it could be very interesting. Two more down. Successful. The Oakland Raiders could have their second consecutive championship. Unsuccessful, the New York Jets labeled it a success and win their first championship in their first five. Third down from the 38. LaMonica dropping straight back. Rolling now to his right. Looking. This is using up time. Now running. He better get out of bounds, which he does. At the 39-yard line, a gain of a yard. But he used eight seconds on the clock, and it's fourth down and nine. has no more timeouts left. Daryl LaMonica looking to the bench, hands on hips, trying to figure out what it is that must be done. Hewitt Dixon comes in with word from John Rouch at the bench. And wouldn't it be something if former Baltimore coach, coach, we do bank, takes the New York Jets to the Super Bowl to face the Baltimore coach. Wells to the left, the left to right. Last chance for the Oakland Raiders. LaMonica drops straight back. Big pass rush. Goes the screen pass to Dixon. Dixon tries to come across the field across the 40. They're waiting for him, and Jim Hudson writes him down at the 45-yard line. Ten seconds to go. It is a jet ball, and the pass will be restarted in a moment. Listen to this crowd. They feel the Jets have won the championship. This is Joe Garrett Young. You know, it's always a pleasure to be a member of a championship team. And I feel that's just what I am here at NBC Sports. Just look at the lineup NBC is putting out for your pleasure this New Year. Today is the AFL championship game here at Jay Stadium. And on New Year's Day, 
NBC gets 1969 off to a big start with a football triple header. First, from the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans, Georgia meets Arkansas. And right after that, we switch to Pasadena, California for the big Rose Bowl game between Ohio State and Southern California. It all winds up with Penn State against Kansas from the Orange Bowl in Miami Wednesday night. And don't forget that NBC will bring you the Super Bowl, also from Miami, on Sunday, January 12th. And remember, too, every Monday through Friday and weekends on Monitor, I'll be talking about sports and the people who play them right here on NBC. Jim Simpson with Aldi Regattas and Shea Stadium in New York is Bedlam. We hope to be going to the dressing room, but I don't know if the Jets are going to get there anytime soon. They're being mobbed across the field. They have won 27 to 23. Our producer today has been Len Dillon, our engineer Walter Ryan. And we would like to also thank our spotters, Jack Beglane of the Jets and Bruce Bishop of the Oakland Raiders. Gentlemen, we thank you all very much. And now we will tell you what has happened, if that is possible, in a game such as this. I'll be Rogatis. I'll run down the scoring plays. And then, of course, your analysis. And there were some significant turning points in this ballgame. In the first quarter, and win was strictly a factor throughout the game. The New York Jets came out on a double slot and moved quickly for the first score with less than four minutes gone, throwing the final 14 yards from Namath to Maynard. Later in the first quarter, Jim Turner kicked a 33-yard field goal, and the first quarter ended 10-0. In the second quarter, the Raiders had the win at their back. And LaMonica got a pass to Blitnikoff, a neatly sidestepped the tackle by Johnny Sample, went 29 yards for the score to make it 10-7. But against the win, the Jets came back, and Turner, on his second try against the win, kicked a 36-yard field goal to make it 13-7. But then, as the half was drawing to a close, George Landon, with a minute and 57 seconds left, kicked a 26-yard field goal, and the half ended 13 to 10. In the third quarter, Blanda, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, went for a nine-yard field goal when it was fourth down from the one-yard line. They went for the field goal and tied the game 13-13. And then, back came the New York Jets right away, paying off with a 21-yard touchdown pass to Pete Lamont. And the third quarter ended 20 to 13, New York. The wild and woolly fourth quarter. A 20-yard field goal by George Blanda. After touchdown passes failed because of great defensive work, first by Randy Beverly and then by Jim Hudson, forced them into a field goal situation. That made it 20 to 16. And then the New York Jets went behind as LaMonica hit his man Bolitnikov far downfield and Banizak raced into the end zone on the first play from the five-yard line to make it 23 to 20. But the big payoff, a six-yard touchdown pass to Maynard with seven minutes, 47 seconds to go, in which Namath was rushed, looked to his left, ran around, looked back to his right, and found a diving Don Maynard in the end zone on the right side and hit him for what proved to be the winning touchdown pass, 27 to 23. But the field goal, or the lack of field goal, and several other instances as we said out here got us, I think many people will replay this game for some time. They sure will, Jim, and I'm sure that, uh, you know, hindsight is 20 and as you look at that move that uh, the Oakland Raiders made, they decided not to go for the, for the score. They went for the field goal, and you'll recall, Jim, right after that, the uh, New York Jets were able to move uh, the full length of the field, so you can look back on the decision that was made to go for the 13-13 tie. The Jets moved against the win, the full length of the field, to make it 20 to 13. Joe Namath was brilliant. Uh, he completed a rollout pass. He rolled out to his left and hit Pete Lyman, who had beaten number 21, Roger Bird. Roger Bird is, uh, had a great year. Uh, his fumble was a very significant uh, factor in the game, but probably the most significant. Uh, Jim was a fourth down decision where the Oakland Raiders decided not to go for the field goal that would have given them 26 to 27. Uh, they were, again, they would have been one point behind. Once again, they moved in. They were in field goal position on a big bomb play that uh, was caught by uh, Warren Wells. That would have put them in a position, Jim, where they did not have to go for the TD. They could have again gone for the field goal. There were so many things that were so significant. There were so many heroes. 
Uh, on defense, I think Jim Turner made some of the great plays. He stopped Hewitt Dixon when Hewitt had a full head of steam. He stopped him down about the one-yard line, forcing the, uh, the, uh, the Oakland Raiders to go for a field goal. So on defense, you look to Turner. You look at the Berlin Biggs. He made such uh, great plays uh, for the New, York, the New York Jets. For the Oakland Raiders, where do you start? Uh, a defense that did a superb job. It was a trying kind of an afternoon, Jim. The win we talked about all day was terribly difficult. Hewitt Dixon on his draws and on his circles was really fine. Fred Bolitnikoff has, has just been something else. He made such, uh, such great catches. If you had to ask for a championship game to be played better, Jim, I just don't know how you get one. Well, the final story will say that Joe Namath today threw three touchdown passes, two of them including the winning one to Don Maynard and the third one to Pete Lamont. And Jim Turner kicked all three extra points plus two field goals. And that's the story. The Jets, in their first try, have won the American Football League Championship before a record crowd of 62,647 screaming fans here at Shea Stadium in New York on a delightful winter's afternoon with a temperature in the middle 30s, but the wind very much a factor. And so, Weave Eubank, former coach of the Baltimore Colts, and in recent years, the coach and general manager of the New York Jets has won his first American Football League Championship, and now he will go back presumably to face Baltimore, which is out in front of Cleveland, 17 to nothing, and anything could happen, but presumably to face his old team, the Baltimore Colts, who look like they're going to win the National Football League Championship in the Super Bowl on January the 12th at the Orange Bowl in Miami. And may we invite you on NBC Radio and Television to listen to that game. And of course, on Wednesday, we've got the Sugar Bowl, the Rose Bowl, and the Orange Bowl all here on NBC Radio. But for now, this is Jim Simpson with Al D. saying once again, the New York Jets have won the American Football League Championship 27 to 23 over Oakland and go on to the Super Bowl. And goodbye from Shea Stadium in New York. This has been an NBC Radio Sports presentation. NBC Radio Network. Mm.